Me. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Thank you. Holly. Yeah, yeah please. Cool. There's a heady mix of sports and showbiz in Las Vegas this week, and Live Golf's high rollers are on the strip chasing the jackpot. Day one at the storied Las Vegas Country Club was a chilly affair, but our world-class field of 54 players and 13 teams brought plenty of heat. We have 36 more holes to decide our champions. This is day two at Live Golf Las Vegas, and it all starts right now. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Come on in. Let's do this thing. I'm fired up to have you in my town. Las Vegas, baby. And just so you know, this place is about to be wild. Even though I'm not playing, my juices are flowing. I got to go practice. What do you think I was talking about? Just sensational. Champagne's popping. And all the stars are here. The best players and teams in the world in this city for the first time. Simply magnificent. Yeah, we got them. Ice cool. The most incredible action. Yeah, we got that. To the delight of the watering hole. Absolutely incredible. We came a genius. Hard hits. Relenting play. Guys willing to lay it all on the line. Yeah, we got that. I heard there may be another game in town this week. But I know this. The game before the game is going to be the game. Yes, pure box office. So welcome to Vegas, baby. It's what I live for. Harold Varner III was all shook up in Mexico, but rolled the dice on day one in Vegas and simply could not lose. Paul Casey is another who dreams of cashing in his chips as a Live Golf champion. They are the men to catch on seven under par, but this is Live Golf and the world's biggest names aren't about to fold. Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, and John Rahm are ready to go all in. Bubba Watson and his range goats were four of a kind in the team competition, and our shotgun start is moments away. Hello, everybody, from Arlo White, and of course, from David Fairty, live in the Live Broadcast Studio here in Las Vegas. Welcome to our coverage of day two. Day one, David, very, very interesting. Harold Varner III, from worst in Mexico to joint first here in Las Vegas. He said he was embarrassed with his effort south of the border last week. What was the secret to his success yesterday? The secret was Butch Harmon. He went to see Butch Harmon, who has performed magic for so many players over the years. An extraordinary coach, a great man. And, and a great mentor for Harold as well, um, who had some personal difficulties uh, in, in, in the off season. So Butch really, you know, set him on the right track and went from stone last to, you know, stone first. Indeed, a 63 uh, yesterday, seven under par, HB3 teed off at the fourth. He was bogey free all day, seven birdies, and this was the last of them. 
at the third to end his first round. So he and Paul Casey level on 63. A team that didn't perform in Mexico were the Range Goats. Well, they put that behind them as well. You had to be on pretty good form to even count if you were a Range Goat yesterday. Yeah, for sure. Peter Uline, who's the new guy uh, in there, shot 66 and didn't score. You know, the rest of them shooting 65. You know, I, I think, you know, they're favorites from here on in. Well, they would be. They always are for you, aren't for me. they? Pretty in pink. The Rage Goats at the top of the team competition by a stroke, and three or four of them in the mix individually as well. Matt Wolf, the birdie at 13, 65 for him. Bubba Watson teed off at one yesterday, a feature group, and he responded beautifully. A 65 for Bubba, great to see him at near the top of the pylon as well. That was his second shot into 18. So 10 minutes or so to go until our shotgun start. The sun is shining. It's a tad chilly, but just wait. The action will be red hot. We'll introduce you to our entire broadcast team after this. The new Live Golf season is here. Teaming up golf's most sensational players. You are the GOAT, and the GOAT is you. To see who will win for the glory and the following. Season starts now. Live Golf, get into a new dimension. That yours. Sunny skies, no wind, Arlo, David. Hello, Jerry. Yeah, we're going to see some low scores out there. Actually, we're going to see them from in here, but they're going to be playing very well out there today. Seven under is not going to be the low round today. No. No, although, what, they double cut the fairways? Yeah, last night and, and they're, this they're morning. And they're playing at dawn. Which, you know, it's a slightly different golf course because of that. But no, I agree with you. We'll see some low scoring today because there's very little breeze. Yeah. Might see some mud balls if we do, depending on who hit, hits them. We might get some colorful commentary because yes. that's always a bad break, but part of the game. But yeah, this course, this course in the 80s when they played the, the old PJ Tour events here, it was, it was a different game and it held its own pretty well. Uh, it's a different, it, it, the court, this course needs wind to defend itself against the style of game these great players play. Well, no short sleeves right now for Dustin Johnson. He's got the jacket on. That might come off before we uh, tee it up a little later on. 67 for him in round one, so he's there or thereabouts. David, we were looking at the, the top of the pylon. It's very compressed, isn't it? 21 players within four shots of the lead. Yeah. Which yeah, is it's really compressed. The today. Taylor Gooch getting a few last words of advice or just checking on the kids. I, I, I think the latter with Taylor. I believe so. Got a new baby as well. Yeah. Jason Kokrak with an excellent day yesterday. Led the way for part of his opening round, but a 65, he'll be delighted, I'm sure, with that in round one. And Smash are near the top of the pylon in the team competition as well. Captain, of course, by Brooks Kepka, who carded a, carded a 68. Bright sunshine here at the Las Vegas Country Club, a storied property here just off the strip in Las Vegas. And we are, what, seven and a half minutes away from our shotgun start. Uh, Jerry Foltz is alongside us now, fresh from the post, uh, the pre-round show out there next the to five the putting four. green. The 5-4. Five the five four. Four. The cool, you're with the cool kids now, uh -huh. aren't you, on the 5-4. Um, we talked a little about HV3 and what a, a fantastic comeback it was from last place in, in yeah. Mexico to tie for first yesterday. Paul Casey is a man who's been enigmatic so far on the live golf circuit he's always contributed for his team the crushers who have done very well they're the reigning champions individually maybe less so but a 63 for him yesterday and he says he feels great yeah uh, you know he hasn't you know played consistently well uh, the way he has done in the past but you know he's a phenomenal player when he gets you know to strike in the ball well he's got a beautiful quiet swing and an elegant finish to it it's like a fine wine yeah it seems like unfortunately throughout much of his career he's been between moments of injuries and he even yeah. fought a few nagging yeah. ones last last year as well when he's healthy he has no flaws in his game as David alluded to and it would be no surprise to any of his competitors even as they you know even at this point in his career if he went on to be in contention on championship Saturday or he even came out victorious yeah he said he's not physically 100% he's getting older he said but his ball speed is right up there that was his birdie at seven 
to end his round at 63, tied with Harold Varner the third. He uh, teed off at eight, he bogeyed 10, so he's one over, and then eight birdies the rest of the way. So a terrific round for Paul Casey. But this is uh, Live Golf. There are going to be plenty of competition uh, down the pylon. You look at the likes of Brooks Kepka, who is two under. He's there or thereabouts. Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson. So it's going to be pretty hot today, isn't it? Yeah, but, and then there's the wild card to me. Those guys you expect to play great. You're more surprised when they don't play great than when they do. But the wild card to me right now is Matthew Wolf. He's in a good place on, t on Team Bubba, yeah. as I call it. David's Range Goats. He's... Uh, he feels like he's got people around him who care more about him as a person than the scores he shoots on the range, and that's huge to a guy like him. And his, his, uh, his ceiling, David, is unlimited. Yeah, and then you've got Jason Kokrak, who's up there and so familiar with this golf course. His aunt and uncle actually live on the golf course, and he's spent a lot of time here. So local knowledge, you know, that's yeah. definitely a factor. Knows it like the back of his hand. Now let's get back to the uh, range goes. And Peter Uline, he went round in 66 yesterday. The score didn't count. Only three scores counting on days one and two. All four tomorrow. And the range goes GC. The cold couldn't stop the fire from the range goes yesterday. Time to do it again. And Peter Uline was with our own Sue Ann Heng a little earlier. On the chipping green, and I've found a fellow goat, the team that's leading by one. Peter Uline, great round yesterday, four under par, but your score still didn't count. Do you feel like you maybe have to up your game today? <laughs> uh, I mean, we had a good day yesterday. I think um, anytime you can shoot four under and score get tossed, it's a good day for the squad. So hopefully we can keep that going, and um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I spoke to Bubba yesterday and he jokingly said you guys were very thankful to not be in Mayakoba because it was just so tough off the tees. Do you feel like your team is embracing your strengths out on this golf course? Uh, I guess so. Um, I don't know. I can't really speak on behalf of everybody else, but I, I, I did a better job keeping the ball in play, which I wasn't doing at all last week. So um, I'm guessing they did the same. So I'm sure if we keep doing that, I'm sure it'll be just as good today, hopefully. It's your second week as a GOAT. Uh, how has the team dynamic been? It's different. You know, he's, Bubba's definitely a different captain compared to DJ and Brooks. Um, you know, I obviously I'm close with Wolfie, so I have that relationship and Thomas. So, you know, we all get along quite well. And um, so it's been good. It's just it's just totally different. And uh, but it's been it's been good so far. All right. Thanks for the chat. Play well today. Great stuff from uh, Sue Ann with Peter Uline. Interesting moves by Bubba Watson. Eyebrows were raised when he traded away the individual champion, Taylor Gooch. Harold Varner III went to the four aces as well. In came Peter Uline and Matthew Wolf, who is a player that Bubba rates extremely highly. 11th place, it looked like it might have backfired early on in Mexico, but what a great day for them yesterday. And they seem to be meshing as a team as well. Yeah, I think Bubba is a perfect captain for Matthew Wolf. You know, um, the two of them, they're, they're really relatable. And, uh, you know, Matthew Wolf is one of those guys that needs to be kind of nurtured, I think, to, to a certain extent. Peter Uline, you know, a really solid player, played beautifully last year. And, uh, you know, they look like a, a really cohesive team. Yeah, and they're close friends. I know there's a little bit of an yeah. age gap between Uline and Wolf, but they're close friends. And Peter Uline's one of those influences that he's just so laid back. He doesn't get stressed about anything. He's got almost that chill DJ kind of yeah. way about him. And it doesn't matter what you shoot when you're back at the team room or where you're back, you guys are hanging dinner, going dinner together. He's just a guy you want to be around. He's going to make you smile. And the last, they said the last thing they talk about when they're together is golf. They said nobody cares about your bad break on 13. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for a player like Matthew Wolf, if he's in the right environment and he needs to be in the right yeah. environment to get the best out of it, is this the environment for him? Yeah, look at him right now. He is all smiles. I, I, I walked past him at the hotel the other day. He was hanging out with... Uh, he was hanging out with uh, one of the other players, and he's just—I mean—he's just all smiles, and he's—he's and he's in a happy place. I know that sounds trite, and I know we don't talk about that part of our our health enough. But he's in a good place, and his talent's unlimited. Well, let's uh, get the views of our on-course analysts out there who are wrapped up against the elements for the second straight day. Don Belay, we'll start with you. Uh, what are the keys to success out there? Uh, for you on day two. Well, hitting fairways, Arlo Harold Varner missed one fairway yesterday. The rest of the guys on near the top of the leaderboard hit about eight or ten. It's absolutely crucial, and this makes life so much easier. If you're in the rough here, you're going to have to go over trees or around them. You're not going to give yourself enough birdie looks, and you're going to have to make a lot of birdies out here today. 
There are only four shots between the lead and the 12th place and plenty of big names behind it. I spoke to a few players and they're quite surprised that the scores weren't lower yesterday. Bryson and Matthew will both said that there's a 60 out there up for grabs. You can certainly count on the heavyweight champs to deliver a low round today. So these guys in the first two groups, they can't afford to relax. They have to keep the pedal on the metal and play aggressive. Thanks, Suan. Do you, do you get the same sense out there having uh, seen the course this week? Is there a 60 out there today with the conditions as they are? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. sub 60, I think. And uh, wow, I know we saw 57 on the Corn Ferry Tour yesterday, albeit he has a short course at altitude in Columbia, but nonetheless, at 57, we saw a great 59 last week on a tour proven course. Uh, and we could see something sub 60 today quite easily, maybe more than one. The countdown is on to our shotgun start here. Day two of Friday, we'll have a championship Saturday tomorrow here in Las Vegas. And we will start at the first tee, and he has earned it. After a 63 yesterday of the Crushers, it is Paul Casey. He doesn't hit every shot perfect, David, but it's hard to see why when you watch yeah. this swing. Yeah. And I think it's between him and Louis Rostazen, just the, the prettiest swings out there. There's a few. Put Charles Howell in conversation. Yeah. Look, it yeah. just looks like a machine when he's swinging yeah. like that. Next on the team, please welcome from four aces, GC, Harold. Let's Varner stay for III. the other man who carded a 63 yesterday, Harold Varner the third. He's got the Vegas four aces cap on. Special edition, of course. Outhouse to the penthouse, and one round of golf. There's there some embarrassing last week, Jerry, yeah. didn't he? He said he didn't pull his weight. I wanted to help the team. And he said, when you get traded, this is interesting, you want to beat your former team. So yeah. he's fired up. And the guy you got traded for. Brooks on the tee. Oh, that's a stunning backdrop. Oh. Back on the first tee, another range goat who was five under par after his first round. It's Thomas Peters. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that one either. Good start for these guys. Abraham answer on the tee at 16, par three. 182 today. Get the hole! heard from him just before the shotgun start. Here is Peter Uline on the tee at three after a 66 yesterday. Shorts and a, ha a hand warmer. Yeah. We really only see those on uh, quarterbacks yeah. in the cold climates in the NFL. John Rahm of Legion 13, who of course won their first ever Live Golf League event in Mayakoba last week. He is teeing off at six. Fine start for John Rahm. We are underway on Friday. Round two of Live Golf Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Country Club. Still a few spots of uh, abnormal ground condition where there's a lot of traffic outside the ropes, but it's going to be playing great today. Well, we agree, I think, with Nico. Great to see the likes of Bubba Watson, Paul Casey, and Matt Wolf back at the top of the leaderboard in golf again. Been a long time. Play well, boys. Well, they've started excellently. Bubba did get himself in contention last year in Bedminster. A final round 76 saw him slip down the pylon on Championship Sunday. But it's, it's easy to forget just what he went through with that serious knee injury and yeah. the operation and the recuperation last year. Yeah, if Nico, the golf fan, thinks it seems like a long time for those guys, imagine how they feel. It seems like forever for all of them to have been in contention. And, uh, you know, you're not human if you don't start to wonder if you may never be able to get to that level of play again. But you don't get to this level without believing that, you know what, just a little more hard work and, and a little bit of confidence and I'm back. 
Well, there's a big game happening here uh, on Sunday, I believe. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs represented here. Feel but, sorry uh, for him. Hope, good luck. Hope you have a good day. But yeah, I'm sorry the 49ers are winning. It's the only way I keep my job. My boss is a huge 49er fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's the scene on the first fairway. A lot of rain around in Las Vegas uh, this week. David it's cleared up yeah, nice. David mentioned they mowed yesterday evening and they mowed again this morning. That's pretty rare, actually, to double mow fairways. Yeah. The first fairway. Paul Casey, Harold Varner the third, and Thomas Peters. And Don Boulay, you're following this group. I am. Three very nice drives, all in the fairway. As Jerry said, though, mud balls could be a problem with no lift clean in place, and there's just a tiny little bit of mud on I the front side of Harold's ball. Like, I mean, it's 290 two in front. Anything coming down on them group of people just left of the TV tower. I mean, a normal one easily pitches 10, 10 up the green. Not really, great deal there, mate. And it's not the right. With this pin, it's very accessible, even from this distance. I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't be surprised to see an eagle from one of these guys starting their rounds. Oh, oh, the mud got that. That turned hard left. Well, he's in the bunker, managed to avoid the water, and he's got plenty of green with which to work. Might not be terrible, but still not a good feeling break. I don't think he saw the mud that's on the front side of the ball. It certainly affected the ball fly. It turned. Peach is done. Well, it's a little right. Jason Kokrak, second and two. Suan. Five and a pass, 65 for Jason yesterday. And back to Paul Casey at one. Well, talked about that he's still got his ball speed. Certainly has. He out drove the other two by about 12 yards. Headed to the middle of the green. Yeah, it's amazing how that ball speed stays up if you hit it in the center of the club face. Our individual champion, of course, is Taylor Gooch. Not at his best in Mexico, but he's there challenging here in Las Vegas on day two. This is his second shot into the third. Welcome to the Live Golf League. If you're new to this, here's the deal. 54 players, 13 teams of four, plus two wild cards at every event. They'll play three rounds with a shotgun start, and players compete both for their team and individually. Individual points are earned each week and add up across the season. Finishing at or near the bottom of the standings means relegation out of the Live Golf League. In the team competition, this is where things really heat up. For the first two rounds, the top three scores count towards the team score, and all four scores count in the final round. Lowest total score wins the team showdown. Four aces conquered. Team points also add up across the season and determine seeding for an epic winner-takes-all team championship finale. They are the Live Golf team champions. This is golf, but louder. This is Live Golf. Abraham Anser with a, an early birdie opportunity here at 16. Abe Anser is very well placed. Bubba now here on the second with a birdie opportunity. Didn't hit his best iron into the screen.
said in his press conference yesterday he really wants to lift the trophy not just for his team but for selfish reasons as well he wants to prove that he can still compete and win out here well of course he traded away Harold Varner the third he traded both range goats that had won individual titles during the offseason this is HV3 third into the first yeah a lovely bunker shot there long one First look at Caleb Surratt, his second shot at number 17. You had a chat with his college coach this morning. Yes, Brennan Webb of the currently number six ranked in the coaches poll. Uh, Tennessee Volunteers playing down in Puerto Rico. What a beautiful shot right there. Yeah. Peter Uline, second shot at three. Sam was talking about Bubba wanting to lift a trophy, not only team, but individually. At a minimum, Arlo and David, at a minimum, 41 players of great players out here will not lift an individual trophy this year. At yeah. minimum. That's a lot. Matthew Wolf on the second green. And a great shot from the right side of this fairway. Tied third in putting yesterday, 26 putts. It's a good putting round for him. Says he just wants to minimize any errors out here. He did that yesterday. Good try there. Next to the green at one, Paul Casey. A long eagle attempt. I'll tell you what, these guys can finish in three and a half hours. They do not waste time. Great things out here on this league is the pace of play. Four and a half hours for everybody in the field yesterday, and that is so rare in men's professional golf. Taylor Gooch for birdie at three. Oh, it's a fabulous start for Taylor. Good news for Smash GC as well. The former Range Goat has got them to 14 under par, and that is third place. Jason with the birdie opportunity to open up his round, hit a great nine iron into the screen. It wasn't, it wasn't, an, it wasn't an easy little chip for Thomas Peters, had the mound to go over, but very makeable birdie part. Let's take a first look today at the Crusher's captain, Bryson DeChambeau, for birdie at four. The most interesting man in golf. Oh, that's a great start for Bryson as well. 67 maybe tied, yesterday. Maybe tied with Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a few interesting characters out there, haven't we, yeah. David? I chatted to Varner walking up to his third shot. He says, I saw the mud. He said, did you see the flight? I said, I sure did. It was like a big knuckleball turning hard left. Good bunker shot, though. Good chance for a four. I saw the mud, but the mud won. It always does. Yep. Paul Casey then. Bird is his first hole, the first, and has a one-stroke lead. John Rahm for birdie at the sixth. Oh. A few of those yesterday. We have a couple of wild cards in the field, our 54 man field for 2024. Hudson Swafford is one of them. I was shocked when he's playing as a wild card and didn't get picked up by a team. He's such a solid player and a good guy. So they're playing as individuals not affiliated to teams. Now, if you've yet to sign up for Live Golf Plus, you're missing out on something quite special. Download the app yeah, from the App Store, just like you would Netflix, no, Paramount Plus, enjoying. or Peacock. But unlike those, the beauty of Live Golf Plus is that it's free for most of the world. Once there, you can enjoy live, commercial-free Live Golf League action, or you can replay every Live Golf round ever played for a golf fan. It's heaven. Paul Casey on the second tee. Pick the ball up quick, uh, the tee up quickly. 
Caleb Surratt for birdie at 17. 19 years of age. He remains three under par. Golf's a strange game, isn't it? Dead last in, in the individual last week. And shot the lowest round yesterday. It changed so quickly. DJ for Bernie at 18. Flag at 18 is down in a hollow today. We're going to see a lot of shots close. Miss Birdie opportunity at the first for Thomas Peters. Here he is teeing off at two. Three with seven. Line. That's likely going to be wet. Hmm. Unless it plugged. I didn't see any ripples in the water. Well, Paul Casey has started wonderfully. He is eight under par, one clear of Harold Varner the third. The Crushers and the Goats are tied in the team competition. Matt Jones off the 16th tee. Left it a little right. Not bad. Let's get you caught up with the uh, action elsewhere at Las Vegas Country Club. Louis Eustazen, a disappointing opening round for the Stingers captain. And Stinger were down in 13th place overnight. That was his third shot of 15 to get it back to two over par. Mito Pereira, he was in last place after the first round, but he started well for Torque. That was a birdie at 15 for Mito. Yeah, for and Honor Bon Lahiri, one of the Stingers, Brendan, Br Brendan Grace, only hit one fairway yesterday on this <laughs> golf course. That's why the, one of the reasons the Stingers struggled. We are not used to seeing them that far down. John Rahm at the seventh. Swing needs no introduction. That's pipes. And that ball flight of his, David, I think will pick up less mud in those fairways where they're prone to. Yeah. Bryson birded his opening hole the fourth. Here he is on the tier five. Carlos Ortiz on the tee at eight. It's going to be loud there today. Yeah. Didn't have Carlos down as a Bob Marley fan. Yeah. Everybody's a Bob Marley fan. <laughs> Spectacular scene here in Las Vegas. This is the third hole, the Westgate Hotel in the distance, which was formerly the Hilton, and before that, the International. Las where Vegas International opened Elvis up. Elvis had his uh, residency. Yes. Angle at 6-0. Feel a little bit of help. You okay with this uh, 56 right now? Yes, I am at the moment. I mean, you got to touch a down slope. I don't yeah. think you can hit the other one easy enough. You know what I mean? Well, I think it'll just skip real bad with uh, hitting the other Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Huh? I, I think that's ideal, Jeff. Okay. D. Rob, David Robinson is caddy who's transformed his putting of all things. Jason Kokrak, great putter and player himself. I think people kind of soon to forget Kokrak won. I thought it was his first PJ Tour event right here three years ago in Las Vegas out at Shadow. Steve Wynn's course. Awesome place. But uh, comfortable playing in the desert. It's not really high desert, about 2,000 feet of altitude. Hit the flagstick with that one. You know, the ball flies what three or four percent further. Maybe I'd say at 2,000 you're getting up close to yeah about a third of a mile. Yeah, probably three and a three and a half to four percent farther. But the dry air and even though scientists say humidity yeah. creates more lift, um, they've never played golf in dry air. Bubba munching one out of there. Very difficult to judge the pace coming out of that stuff.
Henrik Stenson was two under par after his opening round. This is his second shot at six. He was sick as a dog last week. Struggling with a cold still. That's beautiful. Hello, Neiman. <laughs> Very early today. Love it. Champion in Mayakoba in dramatic circumstances on Sunday in almost pitch darkness in the playoff over Sergio Garcia, his former mentor. He's nicely placed on two under par. And a chance of birdie at eight. Now then, back to the second, Dom. What has uh, Thomas Peters got in store here? Well, he just got a rules official back for able to help him with this situation. He was in bed. And you got just, it, you see the tee, you just about six up. inches above the It's on lock from this angle. You got four over, so it's like 21, 25. Is it too good, sir? I think it does, yeah. I mean, I'll be keeping it. Obviously, just a hair left on that. Is that a microphone or the crowd? Were your angle there? Turns out it's a pretty good break. Or he was just inches from burying that on the lip of the bunker, wasn't he? Yeah, and uh, using the one club length, he's now giving himself a stance from the nearest point of relief. So not a bad lie or stance whatsoever. It's head to the middle of the green, right of the pin. Oh, bunker, I think. Yeah. Casey next. Another beautiful tee shot. And long. He's going to be staring straight at this pin. First, this course, Don. He, he described Mayakoba last week as being like Jumanji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of mangrove, indiscriminate routing system around there. You're not going to get any shots out of that stuff. Well, Live Golf continues to bring golf, but louder, to exciting venues and cities all over the world. Needless to say, Vegas fits perfectly on the schedule. Vegas, baby. Come on. Man, I'm pumped. It's party city, you know? I think it's going to be really cool to, to showcase the talent in a place like that. Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas could be unbelievable. Being so close to the Strip, so many people are in town. I'm definitely very excited about that. Live Golf to Las Vegas with the Super Bowl is one of the best things that we could have done. Those fans are the same fans that would really enjoy and appreciate what Live Golf has to offer. We're going to Las Vegas Country Club. It's a golf course that I really like. You know, it's in my hometown, right on the Strip. It'll be popping. Very excited about playing out of home because my record at home is pretty good. Oh yeah, I think it could be at a lot of people, it could get noisy. Vegas, Super Bowl weekend. Really won't get any better than that. I think one or two of the guys are going to the big game on Sunday, and actually John Rahm's played a few rounds with Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> who's a pretty handy golfer, the Chiefs quarterback. Matthew Wolf and Bubba before that played his third. Uh oh, wow. Ooh. Ever since the advent of Live Golf, albeit so long ago, like what 21 months ago, so many of my <laughs> Way friends back when. so many of my friends have said, when are you guys going to Vegas? Live golf belongs in Vegas. So that's an awesome reception. Chilly temperatures, but it's not keeping the people away today, nor tomorrow from what we understand. Waco gets it to three under par. DJ, his second shot into par five first. Oh, one-handed. There's water. Yeah, oh, sometimes wow. those one-handed ones are okay, and that would qualify. Yeah. Heck of a miss. Jason Kokrak, third birdie here on three. Jerry, you mentioned about his caddy, David, helping him with his putting. Apparently, he got him to lengthen his putter by an inch and that completely changed his putting stat became one of the best putters on the pga tour that wasn't his best though paul casey on the green at two this for a two-shot lead he looks like he's aiming a foot foot and a half outside the left lip 
Looks pretty good. Elsewhere, Stinger GC, the South Africans, won't have been happy last night with a 13th place finish after day one. Charles Schwartzel, he is one under for the competition. That's his second shot into the ninth. It was Louis Eustace with the big dunces hat after day one. Richard Bland having another fine tournament so far. He plays for the cliques, that's for birdie at 12. That drops, and Blandy is two under par. Matthew Wolf did make that six footer for par. And here is Caleb Surratt. Oh, right at the flagstick again. Next to the third and Bubba for par. It's always tough when there's shadows over the hole. That's not a good omen for Bubba. He talked about his secret to his round yesterday. It was simply just making a few putts. John Rahm for birdie at seven. <laughs> Ominous. Harold Varner was in the same bunk, well, in the bunker that Thomas Peter just missed. Couldn't go for the pin, had to miss it left. Chipped up to this point, this for par. First drop shot of the week for Harold Varner, the third. Just before that, Thomas Peters for his par. <laughs> Tyrrell Hatton, 64 on Sunday, which helped Legion 13 to their inaugural victory in the team competition in Mayakoba. He was the low scorer of the entire field on Sunday. He's three under par and has an opportunity to get it to four under there. Kieran Vincent, one of the Vincent brothers, out here, his third shot at the ninth. Nice. Truly a band of brothers, Crusher's GC. People don't realize how much I lean on him for advice and wisdom. That's Bryson DeChambeau after play yesterday, talking about Paul Casey. And in the interview after the round, was it Sue Ann who told him exactly how Casey had gone round? And he, and he punched the air with delight for his teammate, didn't he? He was had gone round in 63. And here's Paul Casey, who's one under for his round so far, and he leads by two. That is a very tight knit team of golfers. Right. Casey leads in Las Vegas. It's a tie between the Crushers and the Goats. Looked like that might have caught the bunker. Couldn't really tell. Now, Thomas Peters, don't go left. He hasn't. He's gone the other side. Yeah. Statistically, a better side to miss it on. John Rhyme up the eighth tee. After the one handed second shot, DJ for Eagle at number one. Good try. Yep, I just smoked it. Janichiro Kozuma playing with Rambo. This at eight. I had the look of going a little left. Not much. Over at the first, Adrian Maronk. He has this for birdie. Adrian from Poland.
to will happen. For birdie at one. Obviously, it was in a little bit of trouble off the tee. Otherwise, he'd have been somewhere up around the green and two. But a nice wedge shot to here. Maybe six feet away. No problem. Legion 13 making their move early on day two. They are 11 under par. They're tied now with the four aces. Five back of our co-leaders. Caleb Surratt Just blows one past the right edge there at the last hole. Back to the first and Dustin Johnson for birdie. Based on what that did coming past the hole, this is maybe just off the center of the hole. Tiny bit of break left. Excellent start for DJ. He is four under, four back of our leader, Paul Casey. There's the mosey. <laughs> now, a brand new team with fantastic new merchandise, new players for which to cheer, familiar teams with new faces and new logos. The team gear is all available on site at the merch tent or online. Just go to a Live Golf League event or log on to shop.livegolf.com and grab your gear. 13 teams, 54 players, dozens of items that'll make yours or your golf buddy's day. Oh, that's horrible. Hmm? Eek. Paul Casey of three. More than like the... Ask if that is in or out of the I bunker. Just that, the yeah, Brad just... Bowman is there and that, that ball looks like it's in the bunker. Meanwhile, Richard Bland, second of 13. Oh, oh, look at Blandy. Made one last week. Barner's going to go ahead. John Rahm making his move on Friday, day two in Las Vegas. He's got it to four under par, two under for his round so far. And the putter of John Rahm is heating up here in Nevada. Well done. Thank you. Last week's runner up, Sergio. Tee shot at 12. Back with our leader, Paul Casey. Right here, yeah, he's not going to get rid of He's in. You know, no, Brad no, Ullman determined that he's actually in the bunker. So, I mean, ideally, I mean, ideally, it'd be what? 94? Something like that? Get the 94th sort of shot. We just got to get it out. He's got yeah. to play sideways, there's no choice, but that's, that's not an easy shot because the toe of the club is going to hit the lip of the bunker. How, it, how that's going to react, it's anybody's guess. The only thing is, if we go that way, can you go that way? I'm not sure I can actually. Now I'm in here, I just got to go that way. Just watch yourself in case it pops back. Yeah, this could pop up and backwards almost. It did go backwards, yeah. just a little bit. Horrible break there. Here's the strike and the contact. Don't know if the club ever actually touched the ball. Bubba at four. 52 degree wedge, whole locations on that back left portion of the screen. Elsewhere here at the Las Vegas Country Club, 
which is dripping with golf history. Louis Eustace repairing some of the damage of his opening round 73. He's two under today after that birdie at 16. Laurie Kanzer, a wild card alongside Hudson Swafford. That's birdie at 12. He is two under par for the competition. Thomas Peters over near the three on that You go back clock on the stage wall. Oh, Br Brad Ullman's a busy man. Thomas asked for a ruling because he's on tire marks and he was entitled to a drop, but he would have, his nearest point was to the left of him. Where he would have dropped, he would have ended up behind this small tree, but it uh, looks like Casey's going to hit first. One or two short, or not. Just go on it. Probably one short, but two yards of help. So you're looking at an 11 shot. Virtual caddy. So this will be one of his various wedges. Mm. What a great four that would be. Mm. Oh, no choice but to go low. See his caddy Alan Marrow is just removing some gallery stakes and ropes. Is it just too tight a lie to try and take the aerial route or too close to the tree, Dom? It's it's a bit of both, to be honest, Jerry. But okay. uh, he's got to be careful here. He's aiming right towards the cart path. Needs to clear that. Oh, this is this is really good. Yeah, so hard to judge the pace when you've got to drive it in that low. It's a good shot. Jason Kokrak, just behind the green here on the fourth, pulled his wedge just slightly. I wasn't great there. Yeah, it kind of popped out on him. Bryson, his second shot at six. Little punch shot with one of his wedges. Taylor Gooch on the tee at five. 184 yards. Full finish. You don't see as often with the irons out of Taylor. Usually some sort of finesse shot. But that's predictable. We saw it all last year. Matthew Wolf for a birdie here on the fourth. Drove it on the sixth rough. Missed it way right. Had a pretty good lie. Hit a sandwich to this point. Bryson mentioned yesterday in his post round interview, these greens are tough to read. They're very tricky. Some really subtle breaks. We heard this that one's from not a, an easy putt either. Yeah, we heard that from a few players yesterday, didn't we? we? Called them tricky greens to make putts on. And they are a little bit faster today. 11 7 yesterday, 12 0 today on the Edward S. Stimson stemp meter. Yeah, that's a good piece of trivia. Mm. Sergio, runner up after that epic four hole playoff in the glooming in Mayakoba last weekend. That was for Birdie at 12, and Sergio is two under par. Bubba. Bit of a shaky putt on the last hole. Let's see if you can put a better stroke on this left to right. Purdy putt for Harold Varner here on the third green. Is it going to turn enough? Well, it turned a lot at the end. He had a few of those yesterday. Just got it just outside that live line that we saw. And before Harold, Tom Peters from over the back edge. <laughs> well back, live with Paul Casey. And this would be an excellent part to maintain that two-stroke lead. Certainly will be, and I don't see him missing this. Oh, 
Those type of pars make you feel very good about yourself. Yes, they do. They do. That's almost better than making a birdie for your psyche. Well, Bryce into Chambeau has had an electric start to round two. That was the birdie at six. So he's four under par. DJ, his second shot at the second. Smash GC introduced its community initiative program, Smash for Success, last year. The team is hoping to make an even bigger impact in 2024. This week, they announced both a junior golf scholarship and a mentor of the year award. The $5,000 scholarship will be presented at the Live Golf Houston tournament later this year. In recognition of those who dedicate their lives to supporting young people, the mentor of the year award will present a $1,000 prize and a plaque to the distinguished honoree at the team championship. Smash GC visited student athletes at Valley High School here in Las Vegas this week. The visit included a conversation between the team and students, followed by a few rounds of Chippo. After the visit, the Chippo boards were donated to the school. The Valley High School junior golfers were also honored as VIP guests for the first day of the tournament yesterday. Taylor Gooch of Smash GC to get it to two back. He's on the green at five. Good putt. Brendan Steele was three over par after his first round. The High Flyers were down in 11th overnight. They're 13th now, but that was a birdie for Brendan at 15. Louis Oosthuizen started three over, would have arrived at the course with the big Stinger Dunces hat on. He's level par now after his opening three holes. Birdies at 15, 16, and that from distance at 17. There's a certain swagger about Paul Casey. He's got the walk back. He knows he's playing well. Uh, it's up the left side, though. Four! Four! Yeah, oh. It doesn't need to connect with any of those olive trees. There's no bones. That's going to be right on the line. It looked like where I saw it come down really close to that row of hedges. Matthew Wolf is on the tee at five. Par three. It's playing 184 today, Arlo. Slight breeze just hurting. Whole location today, it's tucked behind that green side bunker on the right. Seem very relaxed out here. He was having a nice little chuckle with Bubba, walking up this tee box. It's good to see him smiling. Seven iron. Great choice with the short, Suan. Yeah, it's swing. nice and warm out here, actually. Oh, right. Warmer than it was yesterday, anyway. <laughs> a long pull there. Caleb Surratt, his third shot at the first. Caleb has his granddad out there watching him today, calls him Pop. And Pop will be pleased with that one. Bow at the tee at five. This is a little awkward shot for a left-hander, that right hole location. little out of sorts in the early stages on day two but a man here the four races captain Dustin Johnson has started very well this for birdie at two that's yeah. money absolutely 
DJ making his move in round two in Las Vegas. Three back of our leader, Paul Casey. Jason Kokrak on the tee at five. Lucas Herbert, who has joined Ripper GC, the Aussies, for 2024, he punches the air after that birdie. Herbert is three under. What would your walk-up music be, David? Oh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh. Yeah. Pride and joy. Nice. Caleb Surratt at one. This for birdie. Take it yours would be country-themed, Jerry? Pat Green feels just like it should. To the green at nine and John Rahm for a third birdie of the round so far. Your turn, Arvo. Oasis, probably, rock and roll star, oh, which doesn't yeah. describe me, but it would get me pumped up. You are a star. Good one. Our North Star. Very suspicious when you're nice to me. There is always an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I did take a few cheap shots at you during the the, fifth, the five four. So I gather. Pre round show. Notes have been taken. Mm -hmm. Easy target. <laughs> Graham McDowell's having a fine week so far. Second shot at seven. Although he is one over for his round today after a 66 on day one. Variety holes ahead. Some greens, some yellows, and then number nine, difficult par four. get caught up with our leader Paul Casey who's had a bit of trouble off the tee on the previous couple of holes this is his ball oh they got the string out yeah what the rules oh, officials will do side yeah. of the string that's yeah the Paul Caruso my driver golf. Jason it looks like it's out to me yeah the, the boundary line is the inside edge of the white stakes at ground level the entire ball must be out of bounds for the ball to be out of bounds yeah, he needs a run. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to go back right now. Yeah, he'll have to go back to the tee and play his third. Well, this is Bryson at seven. Good start for the Crushers today. They've got it to 17 under par. A one-stroke lead over the overnight leaders. The range goes. Shot from Bryson. Live at four, Harold Barner. Yeah, with a nine iron. Actually, his ball started out more left than Paul Casey's, but he's fine. Yeah, Needs to go a little. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Did Paul's ball clatter into one of those olive trees, Dom? Sure, David. Matthew Wolf now, long range here on the fifth. All par threes were playing under par yesterday. So you have to feel if you're not at least one under in the par threes, you're behind. Yeah, well done. Brooks Kepka, a solid 68 2 under par yesterday. This is his second shot at 10. The Smash GC captain, who are looking for a podium finish 
or better today. They are currently down in fourth place on 13 under. But Brooks looking to make his move in round two. Hendrik Stenson on the eighth. A little par three. Hendrik. He gets it to four under. Two under for his round so far. That's not a fun shot to be hitting. The group behind is probably approaching the tee. You have to be shuttled back if there is an official handy or walk back and play your third. Green at five, Jason Kokrak for birdie. Down the slope. Oh, just a late turn left. Didn't even signal. Kokrak teed off at two with Matthew Wolf and Bubba Watson. He's going to hit a great shot underneath the trees again to give himself a decent birdie chance. These two are hilarious. They're playing so quickly. Our cameramen are having a hard time getting in position. You could throw Matt Jones in there as a fourth and they'd still lap some of the other groups. <laughs> well, if I'm not mistaken, he's putting before Casey even approaches the green, right, Dom? Yeah, Casey just got to his ball. Yeah. And Harold's played. Yeah. Oh, no. how does that not drop? Peter Uline is in the furniture at six. Wants to play something low there. Oh, what a shot this is. Bubba for par at five. He didn't hit a great bunker shot. That'll make up for it. Back to the fourth and Paul Casey's fourth. Oh, just focus on this shot, forgets what's happened. Soft out the grass. Got a lot of grass between the ball. Well, a testing hole number four for Paul Casey. At the moment, he holds a two stroke lead over Harold Varner the third. There's Phil. Third shot at par 5, 15th. Very fiddle like. Waco Neiman for birdie at 10. Mm, good start for Waco today. Two under par for his round, four under. Overall, now Patrick Reed was the odd man out for the four races yesterday after carding a 72. He remains two over par, but that was for birdie at 12. That'll improve his mood somewhat. Cam Smith is four under for his competition so far. That was for birdie at one. We had a quick chat with him outside the clubhouse earlier on. He was all smiles. He was surprised to see us at the course at the same time as him. <laughs> Do you think we just throw this thing on air? Yeah. You mean we don't? Shot there from DJ. But Bryson DeChambeau is tied for the lead once Paul Casey is done because Bryson, that's another birdie at seven. He's birdied three of his opening four holes to get to six under par. What a start. 
for Bryson DeChambeau, and he's reining in his teammate, Paul Casey. Well, this is to, uh, this is for Bogey, so this is still to maintain a one-shot lead. Right now, as a player, with the other guys, your your group's already finished out the way for you. You feel a little rushed. Bryson DeChambeau has got it to six under par, level with Harold Varner III. Our leader is Paul Casey, this for bogey. So what's that, three-way tie at the top now? Yep. Andy Ogletree, his third shot at the first. Only two par fives on the golf course. And he should be able to kick that one in. Earned his way into Live Golf League by virtue of the International Series leading their money list. This is the eighth tee. Got a little wild in the birdie shack. Live Golf League, can we get a hole in one today? Says Collins Arnett. Go four aces. Well, we guaranteed the only time we've ever guaranteed one was Adelaide. And we guaranteed it on round one, didn't we? And Chase Kepka delivered in round three. Yes. Are you are you feeling in the mood to guarantee one? Guaranteed there'll be one tomorrow. Guaranteed, tomorrow. yep. Yeah. We have capacity crowd. It's gonna be nuts out there. Not long to wait, Collins. Well, Bryce might have a go here. Very little lean, just a little right of the hole. That's where you need the flagstick for an ace, right there. 184 yards for Thomas Peters. Got his coach, Mike Walker, here. He's just straightening out his swing now. Last year, he was getting that really across the line at the top, and he hates seeing that. They seem to be straightened out. This is a pretty good looking shot. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, if I can get over that car. Hendrick Stenson, his second shot at the ninth. Really want to be in the rough coming at the ninth green. Unless. Unless you can do something like that. Skittles, Jerry, at the fifth before yeah. Harold Varner plays. Yeah, well, those three squares don't actually qualify as Skittles anymore. Those are the bogeys. Those were all three, uh, well, one really poor shot. Well, that was about 28 seconds from when Thomas's ball landed to when Var Harold's ball went in the air. That's quick. John Rahm is on the 10th. This is his second shot. Well done. He was disappointed in Mike Ober when he bogeyed his final two holes, 17 and 18, to miss the playoff. But his Legion 13 won the team event at the first time of asking. Now, at the 50, Paul Casey coming off double bogey. Good looking shot. Here's Graham McDowell on the eighth tee. Trying to find that back platform. Right there. Oh! It's the Oasis, that's the key. So close for GMAC. Over to the third green. DJ with this one for Birdie. A little high. 
Gam Smith for birdie at two. Gam teed off at 17. Party's opening two holes. He birdied the first. Patrick Reed, we mentioned him a few moments ago. As he got it back to two over par. This is for Birdie at 17, and that's a better start for P. Reed. Looking to count today for the four aces. Sam Horsfield, well, the Majestics need a run, don't they? No podium finish in their last 17 events. They're in the lower reaches at the moment, down in 10th here in Las Vegas. That was for Birdie at 17 for Sam. Fifth green. And whilst we wait, Matthew Wolf, the unmistakable figure, his second shot at six. Yeah, just want a little more spin on that. That could have got really close. Back to five and Harold Varner the third. Yeah, this one's downhill all the way. Although the greens aren't overly quick. What, Jerry, you say they were 12 on the stint? 12 0. I think that's quick on the superintendent's yeah. nightmare known as the stint meter. They don't seem as quick as that. Shambo. Birdie at eight, up yeah, and over the hill. The bottom level. Difficult putt. You'd like to have done better than that, though. Henrik Stenson has started fabulously here on Friday. This for Birdie at nine. He's three under for his round so far. Five under for the tournament. He's only one back of Harold Varner the third, Paul Casey, and Bryson DeChambeau. Paul Casey with the opportunity to reclaim the lead. Yeah, had his caddy Johnny McCarron confirm the line. Birdie chance at 10 for John Rahm. to eight. Suan, you've dashed across to this group, and Bryson has a par putt. I have, yeah. Yesterday he talked about how he left some shots out there. Looks like he's making up for it today. It's an uphill right to left putt. Well, the week of the big game seemed to be the perfect time for Sue Ann to catch up with Liv's biggest hitter, of course, Bryson DeChambeau. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hang Time. This week, we're here at the very chilly Las Vegas Country Club. And for this week's edition, I've got the captain of Crushes GC, Bryson DeChambeau. Well, I, I can't be walking with you and not talking to you about your 58. Yeah. Like, we got to talk about that. <laughs> when I made birdie on seven, I was six under through seven. I knew that I had a par five where I could make eagle. And I'm like, if I just keep going, I could I could legitimately shoot 54. That was the moment. And then I bogeyed it. So <laughs> I kind of shot it down pretty quick. I was like, man, I might, I might struggle to break 60. Yeah. How do you rate that achievement in terms of your career? <laughs> I'd probably say it's number two or three on my list. I mean, U.S. Open, obviously winning a major is gigantic. Yeah. Uh, it was probably the best golf I've ever played in my entire life. Mm -hmm. So that was probably number one on, like, golfing ability. And yeah. so from a skill set perspective, the 61.58 was the best performance I've ever had. Mm -hmm. 
but in regards to you know what a major kind of means yeah that was major you, you can't you can't beat a major Oh, Bryson three under through his opening five holes today, six under par for the tournament. That's good for a three-way tie with Casey and Varner the third. You can see the entire conversation and every episode of Hang Time on Live Golf Plus or the Live Golf YouTube page. Lots of good stuff there. Just scan that QR code. Bryson here on the ninth. Drove the ball so well yesterday, 11 fairways. He did say there's a 59 out here. Maybe it might be him today. Looks like a three wood. Sent on its way. To the green at six and Matthew Wolf to tie the lead. Varner on the tee at six. Yep, just a little fade over the left edge of that bunker in the fairway is ideal. Well, it's, is it going to hang on to the look? Should be okay. Should catch the left side of the fairway. That yeah, soft landing, very little roll. He was upset when he walked up and saw them measuring whether the ball was OB or not. You could see on his face when he saw the balls on the other side of the line, he was not happy as expected. He'll be happy with this tee shot. Three-way tie at the top of the pylon. DeChambeau, Casey and Harold Varner, Henrik Stenson and Dustin Johnson and Taylor Gooch have started brilliantly. And here is Taylor Gooch for birdie at seven. Oh, yes, and that's a share of the lead for Taylor Gooch. Rattled that one in. Huge win in the States. Elsewhere then, Ian Poulter, one of the three captains of the Majestics. Tee shot at 16, a par three. Oh. oh, they're getting closer and closer. Saving it for tomorrow, Arlo. Yeah, they got the memo. Laurie Cantor, the wild card, this for birdie at 14. That's nicely done by Laurie, all of his points will count towards the Live Golf League this season, so he needs to take advantage of every opportunity he gets. Peter, you lying to join the party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then about, there were five. How about this leaderboard? You know, there's a <laughs> bunch of guys, you know, at uh, three and four under there are thinking, whoa, six under is leading. Brandon Grace. Brandon Grace is one of them. He's having a day. Three under for his round so far. Richard Bland for birdie at 15. A par put for Ranaban Lahiri at seven. Crushers are in second place, 16 under par. The Range Goats have retaken the lead by a single shot on 17 under. Matthew Wolfe is on the tee at seven. We have a five-way tie for the lead on six under par. Matthew is one back.
Trey McDowell at number nine. Graham's got a downhill lie. Can't see today's whole location. It's got that tree in front of him. Priest, solid one, dude, yeah? Yeah. Hardest hole on the course, our graphic shows on the pylon, Zulam. Yeah, only four birdies yesterday. It's originally a par five, so that green's really shallow. It's making it very difficult. It's a fun par five, but it's a tough par four. Yeah, yeah it's not a fun par four, that's for sure. No. Yeah, that green is designed to take a wedge or a sand wedge, not a mid to long iron. It sounded just a touch skinny. The eighth tee and Taylor Gooch. Round of 72 in Mayakoba last week and went five under the rest of the way, 66 Hopefully yesterday. On the, the down slope there, perhaps, for uh, Taylor Gooch. Now, Bryson. Huge advantage. He's about 25, 30 yards down from Graham. Coming in with a wedge or maybe a nine iron. This is looking pretty good. Oh, he is dialed in today. Significantly easier to judge that intimidating second shot because of the lack of wind today. On the tee at eight. Ooh, just a little mini swing. Lee Westwood for birdie at 14. The Majestics have climbed to eighth on nine under par. The 11th hole and John Rahm with his second. Today's poll, which will be updated on the post round show, Club 54, the 5 4, a little bit later on. Well, it has to be in Super Bowl week. Which or who would be Live Golf's best quarterback? Scan the QR code and get your uh, get your votes in. Phil leading the way. Well, he demonstrated in one of our yeah. films yesterday. He's got a, a bullet of a right arm on him. Bryson, though, he gets, strikes me he could he could throw the pigskin. Dustin Johnson as well, 22%. Brooks, 23%. See, Bryson would make a heck of a tight end. I think Brooks, a fullback, he'd just plow over people. And and Phil would be a, like a Dan Marino-style quarterback. He's not going to gain any yards on the ground. He's going to stay back there in the pocket and uh, let he's, his he's star just sling athletes. It. And he could sling it to this guy who could leap above any of them to take, take down a TD, DJ. Teammate Patrick Reed for birdie at 15. Oh, that's more like it, Patrick Reed. Score didn't count yesterday, but he's helped the four races into a tie for second place, a stroke behind the Range Goats that after an uncharacteristic 12th place finish in week one last week in Mayakoba. Andy, little wedge shot there out of David Pooge. Joaquin Neiman, 12th tee. These are some great shots. Oh, 
That is a terrific bunker shot from Taylor Gooch. Actually managed to leave that short of the hole. Up to the green at nine. Pat Perez for birdie. Three under this round so far after an excellent day yesterday. Brooks off the 12th tee. Let's go, Brooks. Let's go, Brooks. Ram for birdie. At 11. Oh. Goes right. Right ski. Goes right. Playoffs. Graham McDowell, great iron shot into the screen. Talked about how difficult it is to find the putting surface. And this is going to be a big breaking left to right putt. Moments ago, Bubba Watson, second shot at seven, two over for his round so far. And a chance to claw one back. Over at the third, young Caleb Surratt to save par. Bryson has this to take the outright lead. It's a right to left putt. Bryson teed off at four. Played six holes, he's birded four of them, and he's our leader, co leader on seven under. And he's the co leader because of this Peter Uline at eight. Score didn't count yesterday for the Range Goats. He was a 400 apart, 66, he was the odd man out. But he started very well here, and the Range Goats going well as well in the lead by one. Big bender for Casey at six. That was low the whole way. Elsewhere in the Nevada sunshine. Dean Burmester for birdie at 17 as the Stingers look to climb the pylon. 13th overnight, they're up to 7th on 11 under par. Sebastian Munoz is 3 under par for the competition. That was for birdie at 2 for Torque, who are in 5th place on 12 under. Terrell Hatton, the par 3 5th. DJ. A little windy road that is Joe hey, W. Brown Drive, right behind the West Gate yeah. between us and the hotel. You hit it right here, you get run over by a bus. We used to try and actually, when I was a kid, bank the driver off the road down by the green. Rarely worked out. Mm. Bryson DeChambeau is a man in form here in Las Vegas in round two. On Friday, 
He has birded four of his opening six holes, and he shares the lead with Peter Uline on seven under. This is taking up the green on the fly. Yep, by the green. Just a little wind off the right. It's 283 to carry that white fairway bunker. I guess if that's his line. Works the ball right to left. That was smoked. Just a mere 187 ball speed. 302 carry. Brooks Kepka is staying in touch. This for birdie at 12. Smash are in a tie for third place as well, seeking a podium finish, if not better. 10th tee and Graham McDowell. It's going to take a very different line from Bryson's. It's 284 to that left side fairway bunker. Tell you what, he's looking good. He seemed really confident. Probably just loving being on smash with Brooks as his captain. That's the tee at eight. The Live Golf League continues to improve on an already amazing on-site fan experience. To see it yourself in 2024, scan that QR code now for tickets to future events. In March, we're bringing the league to Hong Kong for the first time. We'd love to see you there. In April, Live Golf will be back in Miami and looking forward to a great week in South Florida. Get your tickets and enjoy the golf. Got about six birdies on the round today, all from pretty good shots. One from the back fringe, one bogey. Well, his new recruit is Matthew Wolf to the Range Goats, who are tied for the lead now with the Crushers. The man who produced the first ace in live golf history in Boston in year one. To the howls of the wolf pack. Very rowdy crowd we had there in Boston. They were fantastic. Oh, that just spins the wrong spins way. Spins the wrong way on him, yeah. Charles Howell the third for birdie at 18. Gets the crushers into that tie with the range goats in first place. Back to the eighth, and the final man in this group to play is Jason Kokrak. Another beauty from Kokrak. Well, the Live Golf Plus app is filled with great content, including a fantastic series of lessons from the greatest players in the world. Hi, I'm Ian Poulter. I'm Bryson DeChambeau, captain of Crushers GC. This is Cam Smith, and welcome, welcome to, to my Live lesson. lesson. So here we go. Yeah. All right, everybody. So the most important thing when learning how to accumulate power and distance is going to be the fact you got to just be a little psycho. I mean, Bryson hits it such a long way. You got to swing as hard as you can, but, but don't give it the energy like you're swinging it fast. You got to be applying a lot of force to the golf club. Testing, practicing, skills of bunker play in general is very much experimental. Ian Poulter for the Majestics. I love to hit different bunker shots. I like to watch people play bunker shots because I'm always learning. That's ah, in an awkward spot. What a good shot that is. I basically want my weight to go through the balls of my feet and these arms just hanging down, literally just attaching to the grip. 
Possibly the best putter alive. I'm gonna sit it in the hole every time. I haven't missed one yet. He put on an absolute clinic. Well, in addition to Live Lessons, you can enjoy Live Golf League tournament action. Another round with Foltsy and What the Fair Hitty, or WTF as we call it. Download the app now. Just scan that QR code. Hundred seventy one yards out of ten for Graham McDowell. Our location today, just in the middle of that green, middle left. Ideally, you want to stay short and right to get the flattest part of this green. Dialed in. Man from Royal Port Rush. John Rahm on the tee at 12. It's coming a little bit. <laughs> DJ at five. 15 feet roughly for birdie. Taylor Gooch with his second shot into the ninth. Bryson second at nine with a gap wedge. Here's Bryson. Gap wedge. <laughs> From what I'm told. Nobody else putting seven and eight iron in here. And we can get there with me. Look at that. Rom for birdie at 12. Hanging in there at four under par and really hasn't made much at all in two days. Junichiro Kozuma for the Ironheads at 11 had this from off the green for birdie. That's why it's part of Don't Blake. He is a product of Live Golf Promotions in Abu Dhabi earlier, as was this guy's brother, Kieran Vincent. That's Scott Vincent also for the Ironheads at 13, his second shot. That nearly jars it. Jason Kokrak on the eighth hole for two. Nice. Thomas Peters, second shot at seven. Neiman, uh, 13 with his second shot. Kozuma for birdie at 12. Ten. So, Anne, you're watching Graham McDowell. Well, Bryson outdrove Graham by 50 yards on this hole. But Graham hit a wonderful second shot. He's been using the same model putter for many, many, many years. It's got a rotation going on. It's got about five or six of them at home, and he rotates them. Just so the face doesn't get concaved. It's the 
the old school Odyssey putter. Now this one should move to his left. Mm. Great three there on the toughest hole on the golf course. G Mac is five under two off the lead. We haven't reached the halfway stage yet, but the pylon is concertina. Three shots separate the top 19 players. Here's one of them, Taylor Gooch. Oh. Out of 10, Pat Perez for birdie. He's not having a great day, that'll help. Peter Uline on the green at nine. This for the outright lead on eight under par. Paul Casey with a chance to get things back on track. This for Birdie at seven. Parson Shambo now for the outright lead. Got a good read from Pat Perez's putt. Not much movement, fairly flat. He had so many great putts yesterday that didn't go in. Well, we've done our best to make Jerry as comfortable as possible here in the booth, and why not? He's a delicate soul. <laughs> when the man has something on his mind, though, it's best if he's content. <laughs> That's indeed, Arlo. My, another round this week uh, features Caleb Surratt. He is uh, obviously making some headlines since being handpicked by John Rom to join Legion 13 and Live Golf League. Obviously a talented young man. Now professional golf and your dreams of pursuing it don't often hold a lot of guarantees and he really doesn't have a lengthy guarantee here with Live Golf. He has to prove his way. Uh, he's already done it by beating his captain, John Rahm, arguably one of the best players in the world, his last two rounds. So he's off to a good start. But the one thing that he has going for him is that tiger mentality. And what I mean is early in the day when David and I were attempting to play professional golf, you, uh, you had to cut your teeth, pay your dues. You had to, uh, that was the conventional wisdom. Now, Tiger came out and proved to people that you could be great at a very young age. And he has stated that and even apologized for the cockiness of how it sounds that he, he doesn't yet know how good he's going to be, but he just wants to be great. He wants to learn how to win. Pretty heady stuff for a guy playing at this level of competition to want to try and beat these guys on a week in and week out basis, being completely untested against this level of competition, which is so much higher than the competition he faced in college. We talked to his college coach from the University of Tennessee, Brennan Webb, the number six ranked University of Tennessee, and they lost a superstar in this young man. The coach encouraged him to take this job opportunity because because after all, as Coach Webb said, that's why you go to college, to get a good job offer. Now he has to make the most of it. He, uh, he doesn't yet know what his ceiling is. So many players, as they get seasoned as professional golfers, know the best golf they can play, and they know how it stacks up to other guys. He doesn't yet know that. He knows he needs to learn. He knows he needs to get better. But his coach, Brennan Webb, gave him the greatest advice I know to a golfer. Caleb Surratt's good enough to get there. Caleb Surratt's good enough to win there. People have their claps, so should be right into the ring. Certainly looks the part, Jerry. Yeah. Doesn't like the fact that I want to nickname him the baby-faced assassin, though, David. He, he'd much rather just stick with the rat. We're in the home of where, where the rat pack was made. Rat pack was made famous. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that he shaves yet. <laughs> Well, our venue is the Las Vegas Country Club, and it looks an absolute picture. David, this is the 11th hole. Yeah, straight away between the bunkers. A little kidney-shaped green raised up, and, uh, well, they let the rough grow around this, so, you know, the ball won't roll away. 
Bryson on T11. I know Sue Ann's followed him. And Sue Ann, you tried playing professional golf as well. Of course, he's not the, Caleb's not the first amateur to want to come out here and do it. We had James Pyatt, who's trying to earn his way back, and Eugenio Chikar with different levels of success. Yeah, it definitely is, you know, great to see Caleb come out, and especially the way he performed last week and the way he finished last week was just so impressive. It just shows his grit. And, uh, you know, I think in some ways it is an advantage for him to come onto a league that's a team-based league because he just fresh out of college, he's familiar with playing in that type of format and being a part of a team. But, uh, yeah, an impressive young man, that's for sure, and he's got a good head on his shoulders. Every time you talk to him, he's just a very straight-line young man, and it's really impressive. I just think, like... Tyrrell Hatton said he was looking over at Caleb as he was checking in in Las Vegas, and Caleb looked back a little nervously. So Tyrrell said, I walked over. The lady behind the checkout said he needed someone over 21 to be on the reservation yeah. to allow him to stay in his room. So he had to hand over his driver's license so that Caleb had a bed for the night. I think he pretended to be his dad <laughs> <laughs> or his well, mom. I mean, you well, never know these John days. Was, thought John Rahm was 40. <laughs> yeah, you know, and what a team to join too. How much is he going to learn from John Rahm and Tyrrell Hatton? He's certainly going to learn how to swear, but he's certainly going to learn how to play some good golf too. Well, and also what everybody says out here is there is the there's a fraternity atmosphere. I mean, obviously there's teams, there is there's a lot of intense competition amongst them, and they all want to strive to make these organizations as strong as they can be. But they're in this together. They all tee off at the same time together. They spend an inordinate amount of time together, and that can only help young Surat. Uh, mud ball. Surat. Cover. Jason Kochart wasn't overly pleased with that. Oh, now Bubba. Bubba at nine. He'll aim this about 50 yards right with his feet. And he is just as liable to hit a little hook in there. As he is a fade. Hey, Somebody uh, yodeling back there. Not sure what they're up to. Well, two men clear at the top of the pylon. Bryson DeChambeau and Peter Uli, both seven under par. Yeah, nice atmosphere around this party hole, but uh, these guys have got to get a move on. Not playing particularly great golf at the moment. Hey, Jerry, what do you think of Harold Varner as a fullback or running back? He's got that kind of build. I think, uh, you know, I'd put him as the running back with with uh, DJ, ex excuse me, uh, Kepka as the fullback, and there would be some yards gained and some punishment delivered. Henrik Stenson off the 12th tee. Always finishes so beautifully with his chest facing the hole. Strikes the ball like no other. Here's Bryson. Just a touch of wind from the right. Whole location today is tucked on the right side of the screen behind that bunker. Kazuma, second shot of the 13th. Oh, a lovely little spin there from Junichiro. David Pooge, his second shot at the par three fifth. Switched Torque for the fireballs for this season. And he is delivering for Sergio's team here in Las Vegas. As wet as that fairway is. Paul Casey for a share of the lead. 
on eight. That's better. Yeah, that might settle him down a little. It's also given the cushion at the crushers. Momentarily, a three-stroke cushion over the range goes. That is now two. Almost said the cushions have a three-stroke cushion. It's Vegas. What happens in this set in Vegas, you know, stays there. Another lovely swing from Taylor Gooch. John Rahm, 30 opportunity at 30. It looks good, it is good, and he is five under. His score counting for Legion 13 as well, who are 13 under, just four back of the podium. And young Surratt for birdie at five. Sounds like a Star Wars character. Read there, from the youngster. DJ for birdie at six. I love the fact that Caleb actually went and spent some time before this first professional event as a member of John Rom's team with John, and John showed him a few shots around the greens with wedges, according to his Caleb's coach. That was the only real kind of spot in his game that wasn't at an elite level yet. Crucial to find the fairway with this green, and that is way right. Oh, how far right? Not a lot of room over there between the edge of the fairway and Joe W. Brown Drive. Pat Perez is on the green, or by the green, at 11. Not counting today. Pat Perez, he's three over for his round so far. Four aces, though, within striking distance of the podium. Nine, Matthew Wolf for birdie. It's just rude, David. Yeah, edges are so sharp. Jason Kokrak with a huge Left to right swinger here. He did, did he? Ooh, he nearly did. That's one of those type of slopes right there. The higher you hit it, the yeah, more it the breaks. it's going to break, yeah. Well, here's Bryson on 11 for the outright lead. He teed off at four. So I was walking up the green with Bryson. And he He's a little frustrated. So he's already missed a few pots. Wish he made more. Completely misread the one on 10th. Missed another seven footer earlier on in his round. And he's still four under par. He did say to me, these greens are so tricky to read. He, he thinks that's why the score isn't as low as everyone thought. It's just not easy to pick a line. It looks like it's going up one way, ends up breaking the other way.
Tyson serving notice to the field here in Las Vegas. He's birded five of his opening eight holes on day two, and he leads by one. Now, Live Golf brings the fans closer to the game thanks to the greatest access to players in professional golf. And this season, our own Live Studios is getting players mic'd up during rounds. Bryson DeChambeau had one on all round yesterday, and we'll have it on all weekend. Here's a peek at his day one. Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, and John Rahm will tee off together today off the second hole. Have a good one, bro. Oh. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. That is going to be a fascinating route to follow. Thanks. Dude, it's so hard to swing in the cold, bro. 54, downwind, 6, 7. I got uh, 12 feet for this thing, 10 feet. Kind of flattens out and goes this way. First half, right to left, flat. The straight out. putts, the straight putts right here. Yeah. So it's like it goes. Yes. Dials in the distance nicely. Crushed that, bro. Pretty well done there from Bryson. No way that stays straight. No way. Oh, just a little speedy. And break, dude. Oh, like yeah. a chance to sit. Golly. He can buy one. You shoot five, six under the first round, bro. You know, like this is a golf course that is tailor made for me. Bryson's such a great character and a. <sighs> Come on, let's make some birdies, dude. Get in the fight. Get in the fight. So much going through his mind. Bryson kick starts his opening round in Las Vegas. Birdie is 17. He is two under par. It's gonna be the fun putt. Yes. He's been grinding all day. Bryson to Shambo. Don, thanks, brother. That was fun. As always, appreciate it, brother. Good stuff, dude. Thanks, good play. Nice good job, guys. Just great access and insight into the round put together yesterday by Bryson DeChambeau, and he's wearing that mic all weekend. So some really great stuff coming out of the big man. Here's Taylor Gooch for birdie at 10 to get to within one of Bryson at the top of the pylon. Just a common theme. So many of these incredible players missing putts of this exact same length that Uline has here. Ones that we don't see that high a percentage missed. That one, however, was never going to miss. That was the key, Peter. One back of Bryson DeChambeau. Laurie Cantor, one of the two wild cards in the field with Hudson Swafford. Four under overall, three under for his round today, his second into 18. Is a beauty. Our leader, Bryson DeChambeau, has reached the tee at 12. Here's a look at our scoring graphic, otherwise known as our Skittles. Six birdies, two bogeys, averaging under par. A bunch of good shots right around that hole. It's in a little bit of a valley there, David. I yeah. know over the water, though. Let's play 169. So, Slightly easier hole location today than it was yesterday. Yeah. It's in that bowl yeah, in the front of the green. That's, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Perfect. I agree. Just a little wind from their right. Not much at all, though. Perfect scoring conditions today. You can certainly use that backstop just behind that pin. Oh no. Gah! Look at that. Mm. It's not a great shot. Short sighted himself. A moment ago, Harold Varner at the ninth. Over the water. Well, hopefully over the water. Yeah. <laughs> Avoiding a flock of coots or moor hens, whatever they are. 
look like coots. What's a moorhen? Moorhen is kind of like a coot. <laughs> Just cuter? Yeah. Okay. Beauty there from Perez. Peter, you dine on the tee at 11. Oops. Oh, wow. Well, that was right out of the neck and low on the sole. Oh. There's OB there. I'm well, not sure it, about that one. Yeah, that barrier there, that, that doesn't have stakes inside of it, though. It'd have to be on the opposite side of the wall. So he's going to be in bounds, maybe yeah. with no swing. Yeah. Now, Graham McDowell. Playing with Bryson and Pat Perez. Aldo W83, we do too. Like thinking that good things happen to good people. Graham plays well. It kind of proves that old axiom true. Well, Bryson DeChambeau is playing the hot hand here in the second round at Live Golf Las Vegas. He's five under today. He's eight under overall, and he leads by one. Over at the sixth, David Pooch. Pooch, the boys are calling him. Ooh, what a beautiful shot. Pitches it right in the slope, kills it. Second at seven here for Dustin Johnson. Seeking a third birdie of the day after teeing off at 18, DJ. to the beautiful ninth. Now, one of the cameramen just said to me, he thinks Thomas Peters is the fastest player he's ever seen. <laughs> That's saying something when you got Matt Jones in the field. Yeah. And Pat Perez. And Varna, for that matter. Didn't like his second shot, leaked it out right. Still a chance. No. I'm a commentator. <laughs> <laughs> How much was total? It's a good look at this incredible swing of Matthew Wolfs. Get this across the line at the top, then they lay it off on the down swing. Just in a perfect position at impact. Bryson DeChambeau at 12. Well, he's got a good lie, but this ball is going to have to go straight up in the air and land as softly as possible. Yeah, short-sided himself there. Still, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't his best effort. Back at 11, last year's individual champion, Taylor Gooch. is over uh, near the boundary. Oh, yeah. 
pretty much out of somebody's yard. Land on ground, not on sand. Check back in on that. Well, Greg McDowell has. Uh, oh, wow, this is his third shot. Yeah, he was in the right side bunker, had a downhill lie, and just sort of caught too much sand. He was probably trying to bump it into that fringe there if it was on the downslope. <coughs> yeah, that's a tiddler there for. Well, approaching the halfway stage of Live Golf Las Vegas, Charles Schwartzel is two under par for the Stingers, who had a very disappointing opening day. They're seven under collectively today, though, as they climb the pylon. That was for birdie at 14 for the South Africans. Martin Keimer, captain of the cliques, who finished in the points in Mexico, and he's rounding into form as well. That was for birdie at two. Bryson with his par putt here on the 12th is to avoid dropping a shot. This was the toughest par three yesterday. to do elsewhere at 11 Anna Van Lahiri not counting at the moment for the crushers who are tied for the lead with the range goes on 19 under par second shot for Anna Van by Lucas Herbert. Oh, yeah. Adrian Moronk Woo! of the Cleeks. A birdie at seven to take his tournament score to four under par. John Rahm is five under. This was a few moments ago. For birdie at 14. Brandon Grace is having a terrific day after a disappointing opening round for the Stinger GC. This for birdie at 17. That was a few moments ago. He's four under for his round so far today. Five under for the competition. Taylor Gooch for birdie at the 11th. Now back to Bryson to just drop one. Teed off at four in the shotgun start. He birded five of his opening eight holes to storm into the lead. it at seven under par to limit the damage.
Well, it's a big week of sport here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's a lovely day at the Las Vegas Country Club here. The halfway stage of Live Golf Las Vegas, our second event of 2024. Your announced team, myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foltz, David Fairty in the booth, Don Boulay and Sue Ann Heng are out there on the course for us. A little warmer today than a very chilly start, but it feels like 48 Fahrenheit out there. Hello everybody, wherever you're watching around the world from Arlo White in the Live Golf broadcast booth here. So a drop shot on his ninth hole for Bryson DeChambeau. So he's back to seven under par, which means that the top 31 players in the Live Golf League Las Vegas event are separated by three shots. It's extraordinary stuff here in Nevada. Let's head out to our on-course analysts, Sue Ann Heng and Don Boulay. Uh, in a few moments' time, uh, is it Jerry and uh, Jerry and David first? Why not? Absolutely, Why not? David. Thirty-one players within. What was it, Arlo? Three of the lead. Indeed. Yeah. Why? Well, uh, you know, this golf course is holding its own against, you know, all the odds. It seems that the ghost of Dean Martin is probably sipping a translucent martini somewhere, <laughs> gloating, you know, that this golf course has stood up the way it is. But uh, Paul Casey led uh, with seven under yesterday. If you told me, you know, that seven under would lead after nine holes today, I would have said that your wheel is spinning, but your hamster has left. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, Sue Ann, let's get your perspective out there following some of the guys who played well yesterday and why they have stalled out today. Well, at the start of the show, I did say that there's a low score up for grabs and that you can expect the heavy ways to heat things up. Well, that's exactly what's happening so far. Dustin Johnson, John Rum, Bryson DeChambeau, Taylor Gooch, all going pretty low, and you can see their names up there on the pylon. Anytime you give these guys great conditions like today, those guys at the top can't afford to play conservatively. You got to keep playing aggressively, keep making birdies, and we'll see that as we go into the back nine. So, and with the grouping you're following, which uh, which one's kind of showing you maybe the, the framework early in this round to maybe finish strongest of the rest? Oh, I just moved to Bryson's group, so it's hard not to go with someone yeah. like him. Uh, you know, he's hitting the ball great. Couple of unforced errors, missed a few putts, so he's still has some shots out there. He's left some shots out there, which he has told me. Uh, but definitely, I think Bryson's going to be someone that's going to be at the top of the leaderboard by the end of today. Certainly looks that way, Sue Ann. Let's take a look at some of Bryson's highlights from day two then. Disappointment of a drop shot on his ninth hole. He teed off at four with a birdie. He followed that up with a birdie at six, and then this birdie put at seven. The one stage he got it to eight under par and the individual outright lead after his 67 yesterday. This is his second shot into the par four ninth, which would lead to birdie. He birded five of his opening eight holes in round two, just pegged back by that bogey at 12. This was the last of those five birdies at 11. Tom, what exactly is their problem out there? This scoring is just not as slow as we thought it would be. Well, with the lead group, David, is driving. You know, yesterday they drove it so beautifully, but today they're all over the place, and some of the misses are big. Poor Casey hitting their OB. But one of the caddies, or two of the caddies, came up to me and said they're surprised they're still not playing lift, clean, and place. Even when you hit the fairway, there's mud on the ball, the ball's sitting down a little bit. There's certainly some uncertainty going into the greens, even with the short irons. Well, I mean, and there's a lot of short irons out there. It's all short irons. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't imagine that it would make that much of a difference. Well, yeah, you don't. But, uh, you know, where did uh, Harold hit? On the very first hole, Harold had that mud yeah. ball, and the thing just, I mean, shot left. And I think that's really given him a little uncertainty, and he's a little nervous standing over the ball. There's a little bit of moisture on the ball. There is a little bit of mud. But, uh, yeah, you just got to find fairways. It's better than hitting out the rough. I mean, Paul Casey just made an unbelievable bogey on the ninth hole. He was all over the place and managed to hold a 15-footer for a bogey, and it did a big horseshoe before it dropped in. Yeah, so what you're saying is there's no excuse for this. We expect better on the back nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bryson on the tee. His back nine begins. Thanks. Thank you. 
Peter Uline on the 12th tee. He hit a most uncharacteristic tee shot off the last, a low skull, like something you would see in the Pro-Am. See if he can do it a little better here. out of rhythm. Um, that's where we saw Bryson. A moment ago, Thomas Peters of the Range Goats, his second shot at 10. You wouldn't rule out Dustin Johnson from challenging for his third Live Golf title. He's only a stroke back now. That's another birdie for DJ, who is three under par for his round so far. That was at the eighth. Gooch at 12. Bubba's second at the 11th. And back to the 13th fairway and Bryson DeChambeau. Fifteenth and two. He's under the flight path into Harry Reid Airport. Yes. Oh, right at the flagstick. Moronk for birdie at eight. He's two under par today. The cliques are climbing the pylon. They are sixth place, twelve under par. Thomas Peters ties the lead. That was for birdie at 10. So Thomas Peters joins his Range Goats teammate Peter Uline and Bryson DeChambeau on seven under par. Paul Casey has one over today, not like him. And that would have tied the lead for him again. It looks a little out of sorts today. Yeah, yeah, just not quite himself. Cam Smith is four in the park. He has a birdie opportunity here at the seventh. Deftly played by Waco Neiman. Peter Uline from the bunker at 12, one of our three joint leaders. The Range Goats have a two stroke lead now over the Crushers on 21 under par. Perez at 13. Elsewhere, 
Eugenio Chakara, who of course won a Live Golf event in Thailand in our first season. The young Spaniard with a birdie at 14 for the Fireballs. Phil Mickelson for birdie at one. And he's in red figures. The High Flyers captain, one under par here in Las Vegas. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Wolf for birdie at 11, and he gets it to six under. That was a few moments ago. And Brooks with his third shot here at the par 5 15th. Kind of a chewy lie. Played it beautifully. He would pop that in. Now Bryson, after the disappointment of his first bogey of the day, now has an opportunity to reclaim the outright lead at 13. The sun just went behind a cloud and the temperature just dropped three or four degrees Celsius. Now to add on to what Dom said about why it's playing a little tougher than it looks, Greens are tough to read out here. Breaks are so subtle. Don't you think? So that. Green going this way. Yeah. That's kind of why I like Same. that. Yeah, there might be like a fraction of slope right to left, but the green down uh, one one and a half percent. Yeah. I don't understand Bryson's uh, putting percentages, but uh, this should move to his left. Not much. Yeah, don't you think, Sue Ann, that when the greens, you said subtle breaks, and we've seen so many putts around the hole that don't turn much. You're trying to read something into it sometimes? Yeah, I mean, it just looks like they just straighten out at the end. Either that or they snap really hard the last foot or so. Just not easy. It depends on your pace. It'll be a putt. Bryson DeChambeau, 10 holes, 6 birdies, 1 bogey. It's eventful, it's entertaining. He led by 1. This is Peter Uline for par at 12. So Bryson does lead by 1 on 8 under par. And Bryson will move to the 14th at the glorious Las Vegas Las Vegas Country Club. David, take us through the hole. Yeah, 471 yards straight away. And these bunkers are in play depending on what they decide to hit off the tee. And as usual, this green raised up a little, falls off on all sides into bunkers, but there's that thick rough around. That would stop that. Matthew Wolf on the tee at 12. Might be good. Just posing on it. Phil for birdie at two, entertaining his legions of fans here in Las Vegas. And he's two under par for the competition. So Phil hitting some form here just off the Las Vegas strip. Well, we just seen Matthew Wolf on this team. There's, could you find two more different swings? <laughs> oh, Matthew Wolf and Bubba. Gosh, I just didn't start in the right spot. Oh, so close. It's all right. Never had a lesson in his entire life. Where where would you start? Yeah. Well, and just think if if somebody had got a hold of Matt Wolf at a young age and said, "No, you can't swing like that," much like Jim yeah. Furyk. It would have ruined him. <laughs> yeah, probably would have. Your bunker way in the distance. Yep. Shambo on the tee at 14. 302. 
to the first bunker on the right. I'm going to try and just draw this left edge of that right bunker. Where is that? It's not turning. Well, that flies that bunker and flying pretty decently, it seems. Back on 13, Dom has caught up with the Taylor Gooch group. Yeah, that little knockdown of his that he hits with the fairway woods looks beautiful. Yeah, what a go-to shot that is. It's made him a lot of money. Oh, uh, yeah. Caleb Surratt at the very start of his professional career. He's on the tier at eight. One under for his round so far today, Caleb, member of Legion 13. And that is just delightful. Boy, he's fun to watch, this young man. Mm -hmm. The rat's going to become a bit of a folk hero very quickly out here in the process of becoming a really great player. And what a bit of recruitment, by the way, by the Legion 13 led by John Rahm. Yeah. DJ's second shot at nine. Now, the Live Golf League has boosted your Live X experience at select events. You, the fan, will have the opportunity to choose which captains are grouped together for the first round. This week, you picked Brooks, Bryson, and John Rahm. That was a pretty good choice. We're also enhancing your on site fan experience with exclusive meet and greets with players, inside the ropes opportunities, and free VIP upgrades in your bucket list cities. Just sign up to Live X, it's easy and it is free. Beautiful look there at the 12th green with Wolfie, Baba, and Kokrak. Looks like Baba's going to be first from the left edge in the fringe. For the high flyers, Cameron Tringali quietly cruising along out there at one under par. This is second shot at 17. It's a nearly gimme range. And Mark Leishman, big man for Ripper GC. That for an eagle at number one. One of only two par fives on the golf course. Casey is third at 11. Thought that one might be dropping too. Mm. Back to the green at number 12, and Matt Wolf will have a right to laughter here. The same forward press to kickstart the swing, hands moving forward right before taking it back, same as he does in his full swing. Yeah. It's like he never truly gets set still before a putt. DJ has uh, given himself a decent chance for birdie here at nine. Three under par today, six under for the tournament. Didn't hit it. Oh. T 
Thomas Peters to tie the lead. This is for birdie at 11. Held the finish. Good stroke. Hit his line. <laughs> it just teases him once again. John Rahm on the live line at 15. That's for birdie. Uh, he knocks that one in. Well, they're finally starting to drop for Rahm. Yeah. So. You can't help but expect him to factor in mm -hmm. tomorrow. Harold Barner. See if he learned anything from Thomas Peters putt here. He just Negatory. Missed his, yeah, missed his line there. With a second shot here in the 14th, just caught the right rough. Lies pretty good. She didn't cause too much problems. How's the lie coming out? Just pretty neutral. Yeah, I want this to come out. Is the way is the wind? It's like down off our left. Yeah, I think at 10:30, just over 10:30, one of these is gonna be perfect. You might scoot back, sir. Thanks, you, my man. Uh, Appreciate you. So you got a. Just over, it wins Kelvin Cuffield. That's great. Right, you see what I'm saying? Yep. Gap wedge. Where the whole location is today, it's going to slope right to left. So if you can just land this short and left of the hole, you have a nice little uphill putt. I'll be good. Let's go. Spin. Oh. Almost went straight down the canister. Well, Super Bowl weekend is upon us, which is a reason for every sports fan to celebrate, right? Well, in this week's What the Ferrity, we find out maybe not everybody. Now look, we're here in Vegas. It's Super Bowl week, a time of the year that every red-blooded American gets Super Bowl fever. And I'm here to tell you that I am not one of them. There is one aspect of the game that puts my panties in an unbelievable knot, and that is over-celebration. I feel a rant coming on, so get comfortable. Growing up, we called this gloating, and it was some of the most repulsive behavior in sports. Boy, am I glad we don't have anything like that here at Liv. We promised you an ace of 12, and Chase Ketka has delivered! All right, annoying editor, a hole in one is different. Back to my point. I wouldn't mind if it were limited to the end of the game, but it's this early game braggadociousness that would make you slap your own horrible eight-year-old child upside the head that drives me into apoplexy. And while we're at it, let's change a few of the rules of football. I'd like to see a 10-yard penalty for helmet bashing, chest bumping, wiener touching, or anything similar. You stopped a guy from running a yard, congratulations. Give the ball to the ref, get to your side of the field, and shut the f up. Like me, you're being paid a fortune for this crap, so act like you've been there before and leave the over-celebrating to Richard Blandemonium Bland, the hole-in-one artist. Well done. So enjoy the game. And leave the dancing to Emmett Smith, who actually can dance, but had the decency never to do it in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of celebrations, uh, you uh, presumably had to look away at this point, David. This was in the yeah. near darkness in Mayakoba after Waco Neiman's victory at the fourth playoff hole. You're back to proper grouchy four. Yeah, yeah, you should have seen the first version of that. <laughs> Most of it got redacted. <laughs> Taylor Gooch to get into seven under par. Boy, he is finding some form here in round two. He's three under for his round. Now live with Peter Uline. The beautiful part about those features are though is reading the transcript of it, which we I did the other day before he taped it. It's not nearly as good as the delivery. Hmm. Thomas Peters on the tee at 12. You're from the firm handshake. Yes. Brigade, David. Absolutely. Yeah. Stiff upper lip. <laughs> 
We're seeing some wayward shots at 12. This flag in the front has given them trouble. John Rahm is on the tee at 16. Yeah, the first version I wrote of that, uh, my producer said that I, I might well be deported <laughs> if we were to air it. I think he's, I actually think he's playing the number. I think so it's a high 60 shot. It's just that straight. Well, I think John has taken it personally, teeing off at six today. And he's four under for his round so far, so he's got himself into contention. Tied for fifth on six under par. celebrations there elsewhere his young book Caleb Surratt has got it to five under and we keep talking about just how box office this young man is that was for birdie at eight Legion 13 are in fifth 14 under par Jason Kokrak he is back to his overnight five under par after that birdie at 12 for smash GC who are tied for third on 17 under Back to DeChambeau to open up a two-shot lead. This was the second hardest green to hit yesterday. He just made it look very easy. Just a wedge. Yeah, what an advantage, Sue Ann, just to have wedge in your hand all day long. Absolutely, David. I mean, most of these guys are hitting eights and sevens. He's just flipping his wedges different game this guy plays. Nothing to see here. Just Let's seven go. birdies in 11 holes for Bryson DeChambeau. He's nine under par. And when he gets moving like this, He's very difficult to stop. He leads by two. Live Golf just launched the league's first podcast. It's creatively called Fairway to Heaven and is hosted by Jerry Foltz and Sue Ann Heng. But the stars of the show, of course, are the Live Golf League players. Don't you hold the PGA Tour record mm -hmm. um, for the most feet of putts hold for a tournament? Yeah, in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's right here. Give us a number. 558 feet and 11 inches, I believe. You were not counting. I wasn't counting, but that's stats. 558. Show. And I think I was for strokes gained for the week. I have to double check, but I think I was plus 13.5 for the no, week. No, for putting stats. And then you know what uh, Nota Begay told me? Just and you barely freaking won. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you get it done. That's right. That's uh, right. It was one of those weeks like I couldn't miss. Yeah. yeah, I've yeah. seen that. I won with a triple on Sunday, so. Yeah. And I'm, I think Ricky Fowler and I'm the only one with, with doing a tournament with a triple on Sunday. Really? <laughs> Great stuff with Kevin Nah. You can see every Fairway to Heaven episode on the Live Golf Plus app. Download the app from the App Store just like you would with a Netflix or Max. But unlike those, Live Golf Plus is free for most of the world. And that episode filmed right here, recorded right here with uh, Las Vegas resident Kevin Nah is available now. Just scan the QR code on your screen. He, he came to room with his brother, didn't he, who came to UNLV a few yeah. years ago, decided that he enjoyed Vegas so much, he stayed. Yeah, it's not a bad place for a professional golfer, somebody trying to pursue it. And uh, it's really cool to be able to get the fans to see what these people are like off the golf course. Get to know them as people instead of just stars of the game. DeChambeau. Last par five he'll play, one of only two on the course. I was walking up with Graham to this tee box and he said, it must be nice to just flip a wedge into that green. And I said, yeah. He goes, imagine how good you'll be with those drives. I said, not very. <laughs> Another good looking drive. 192 ball speed. Oh, that is quick. I mean, and that's not even his, his Max. fastest, Max. that's his fairway finder. <laughs> 
Bryson DeChambeau, we've seen this script before. He's got all the momentum at the moment. He's nine under par in round two of Live Golf Las Vegas. Next to the green at 16, John Rahm for birdie. It's kind of fortunate to stay up on the slope there. It could have drifted further away. Sir, with the, with the camera, you can't be taking pictures while they're, until they're after they hit, okay? Adam Hayes, long time caddy. Green at 15. That was Lucas Herbert for Ripper GC. Fourteenth fairway at the magnificent Las Vegas Country Club. Apparently, Dean Martin was playing rounds every day before this course even opened to the public. Yeah, back in 1967. I think if I could be a fly on the wall, yeah, with uh, any group of people, there's so many to choose from in history. But I'd love to have spent a day with the Rat Pack and the clubhouse oh. here. Yeah. Peters with a miss there at 12. To the 10th hole, Dustin Johnson with his second shot. Oh, knock that in with your hat. Rarely a tournament goes by without Dustin Johnson being up near the top of the pylon in the Live Golf League. Abe answer. Just a few moments ago, that was for birdie and eight. He is five under par. Arlo, I've been around you long enough to know you wouldn't survive more than three, four hours with Dean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and I've you read, would, Dom. <laughs> me and Jerry, anyway. Uh, seven iron leaked out to the right. Those were my, those were my role models growing up. Well, elsewhere, Richard Bland is five under par as well. It's going to be a cavalry charge on Championship Saturday. That was his second shot into the second hole. Had an ace last week. And he's pin hunting again here in Las Vegas. Kevin Nahr, we just heard from him on that clip of the, uh, the Fairway to Heaven pod with Jerry and Sue Ann. That was for birdie at three for Kevin and the Ironheads. That was Annabelle Lahiri at 14. Peter Uline blocked his tee shot out right here. Missed the bunker, which is a good thing, because he could be right up against the front lip. The lie is good. Not much grass behind the ball. So shouldn't catch a fly. You don't catch many flies out of the rye grass anyway. No. Looks like he might go a little low. That's a good shot from there.
Adrian Moronk, the reigning player of the year of the DP World Tour, has a birdie put here to get to six under par, settling in quite nicely to life in the Live Golf League. Clicks down in eighth place at the moment, but primed to make a charge in the final round. Pat Perez at the 15th. He's blocked out by that right trees, so it's just laying up. Well, form check is back for 2024. Take your, uh, send your swings in and you'll get one of our experts to analyze it in Club 54, the post round show here in the Live Golf League broadcast. Get those swings in. Bryson at 15, second shot. Uh, Sue Ann, I know it's a nine iron already. Absolutely, yeah. Jerry, spot on. <laughs> we saw the caddy signal it. Hanging line. He's got some mud on that ball. The location quite similar to yesterday. Just a little further back. Just a touch of wind helping. Brooks Kepka is trying his utmost to be part of the pylon toppers for the championship Saturday and he rolls that in for birdie that was at 17 he's two under today he's four under for the competition he's counting for the smash GC today who are tied with the four aces for third place on 18 under This was Taylor from the bunker at 14. I see down. Uh, you line it's middle of the green, but uh, that's an awkward pin position here on 14, up on that little shelf just to the right middle. Pretty slow. Fifteenth fairway, Pat Perez, who bogeyed four of his first six holes today, has clawed three of those shots back, Suan, and he's counting for the four races. No. He'd be playing left, right? We got a little help. 40, max. Just not wedge. Right. Yeah, Arlo, his putter's been running hot. Works really hard on that part of his game. Spends a lot of time with Claude Harmon, his swing coach. Shot there. Well, Brandon Grace scrapped for a one under par first round yesterday. He's absolutely flying today. This was an eagle put at one. He would make his birdie, so he is six under par for the competition. Henrik Stenson battling a heavy cold this week, and he's winning the fight at the moment. That was his third at 15, and Henrik is five under par here in Las Vegas. Shot. Tricky day so far for our co-overnight leaders, Harold Varner III and Paul Casey. Casey two over today, his second shot here into 13. That'll help. Peter's in the light rough. Or at least lightish looking rough. Does it release? 
nearly as much as he judged it to. Bryson, hole high at 15, Suan. He was not pleased after that nine iron. But this should not be a difficult pitch. A lot of green to work with. That ball sitting down just to scotch, but not too bad. Caught him having some good laughs between Graham and Pat Perez the last few holes. You can see that's where he wants to land his ball, right about 20 feet short. One hop and roll up. Taylor Gooch to get it up and down for par at 14. Not a bad leaderboard there, pylon. But it bodes well for tomorrow, doesn't it? <laughs> Championship Saturday. Started a day early this week for obvious reasons here in Las Vegas. Better today. John Rahm hopes to be part of the mix tomorrow. He's on six under par. That was his Very second good. shot into 17. Another birdie opportunity for the Legion 13 captain. Thomas, Peter. Thomas Peters for birdie at 13. You know what's going to steal the headlines tomorrow, though, with our with our golf, Harlow? It's uh, it's hard to steal the headlines from that leaderboard, but it's going to be our first ever team playoff. You As you know, this is all oh. scripted. And it's only fitting that we have our first team playoff the same weekend as the NFL's and American sports' <laughs> biggest playoff. Over, so you're saying overtime? Yes, so overtime. Mm. GMAC for birdie. Got a good read from Bryson's chip. He's uphill. Well moved to his left. Oh, GMAC. Back to four in the park. Yeah, he kind of up against the lip, but it wasn't a problem. He picked it off. Oh, that's an excellent shot. Great technique there. How he had to stay back on his right foot to loft it over that lip of the bunker. Oh, some of the greatest players in the world of golf are playing here at the Las Vegas Country Club just off the strip. In Vegas, Taylor Gooch, our individual champion, reigning champion, seven under par. Dustin Johnson having a fine second day. He's seven under Bryson DeChambeau charging. He may be ten under par in a few moments' time. Bubba Watson is still on his overnight. Five under after dropping a couple of shots early in his round today. And his teammate, Matthew Wolf on six under par. He's well in the mix, his second shot into 14. Bryson just had to brush one in here at 15. And that is a three shot lead. 12 holes, eight birdies, one bogey. Life is never dull watching Bryson DeChambeau. He is 10 under par, leading a star studded field by three shots. Now, 2024 promises to be the most exciting year yet for the Live Golf League. New players, a new team, and fantastic new venues. Live Golf Fantasy is back with an exciting format that offers multiple ways to win. Pick your team, compete against friends, foes, and family around the world. Watch your team climb the pylon, and you can win great prizes. More importantly, you get the bragging rights over your mates. It's fantasy, but louder. It's another great way to enjoy the Live Golf League. You can also pick your favorite team as well. Parlay Pro 
I, my dad has never watched a live event on TV before this weekend. He just texted me. Bleep awesome. I've got to pick a team this week. <laughs> Who should he pick, everybody? Well, David is a range go for life. Yep. You were the original social secretary for the much changed Smash GC. Yes. Jerry. Smash for life. It sounded by the, by the Twitter handle Parlay, sounded like a bit of a betting man here in the gambling capital of the universe. Um, who would be the most gambling team with the most? Well, the four aces, I guess. Absolutely. That's a no brainer for Pops. Or you might want to jump on the Legion 13 bandwagon. straight to the right, the money's nice and nice to come. How is that fucking possible, man? That's a good question. Let's look at the 16th tee, the 16th hole. And Bryson DeChambeau is putting one of those rounds together here in Las Vegas. Has the honor. His crushers are 22 under par. They lead the Range Goats by two. Bryson has a three stroke lead over DJ, Taylor Gooch, Peter Uline. Yeah, I mean, I'd almost prefer 1039 just to keep it out of the right to left, but if you like that, I know. I like this stuff. It's definitely enough club, so. It's playing 189 today. The 16th. Whole location. Tricky one. Tucked back left. I didn't want to start this at the TV tower. Just draw it. Two, three yards. He's in a great rhythm. Speaking of Legion 13, as we were a few seconds ago, Tyrrell Hatton. This for birdie at 11. Oh. Hmm. Not overly delighted with the outcome. No, um, he admits himself that he wears his heart on his sleeve. Graham McDowell on the 16th. I was talking to Connor, who's uh, Bryson's best friend, and he said, you know, he's playing so much better this week because of the altitude. The ball doesn't curve quite as much, takes quite a bit of spin off. He's able to control the ball better for Bryson. At sea level, apparently it curls more and spins more. So last week he was hitting 10, 12 yard draws. This week is moving five or six yards. So he's able to take on pins more aggressively. I thought was very interesting. Another good shot from Brad McDowell. The team competition will go all the way as it always does. Jerry has already called first playoff oh. in Live Golf team history. We shall see. That was Bryson DeChambeau, second to 14. The Crushers lead the way at the moment. The Range Goats, the overnight leaders, by a shot. They are still there on 20 under par in second place now. That was Peter Uline's tee shot at eight. And there is a tie for third place. Brooks Kepka's smash GC are 18 under. That was his birdie at 17. Dustin Johnson, the captain of the four aces. I think they were slightly embarrassed by their performance, a 12th place in Mexico last week, and they are tied for th uh, third place here. That was for birdie at eight, and here's the score worm of our top four, se uh, separated by just four strokes. That looks like the mating season for the score worm. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Dustin Johnson, he's got it to eight under par. Two back of Bryson DeChambeau. Dustin is five under par through his opening 12 holes today.
Kevin had very high hopes for his oh, chances this week. Oh. Holy shit. I don't know how close we can get to an ace here in Las Vegas. Derek Carr is a an Ironheads fan. Quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, I believe now. He used to play here in Las Vegas for the Raiders. Derek Carr played in the Pro-Am the other day. Great to have him here at Live Golf Las Vegas. the 14th fairway and Harold Varner the third. I mean it's just a it's a gradual little slope into you. It takes five over, that's a 154. I mean if you got nine there, it's perfect eh? It's not really much breeze there mate. Come on, good solid swing bud. Good shot here. Good approach on the next hole. He could get much closer to lead in a short amount of time. This is a scoring chance here, and then of course, par 5, 15th ahead. Just about a half a club off of how they calculated the distance. Peter Uline drove it in the fairway bunker, had no choice but just to move it up the fairway. Little mud on the ball. He can use a little slope on the right side of the screen. The right side of this pin. Oh, did well. Paul Casey now, four back. Both overnight leaders, Harold Varner and Paul Casey, not counting for their teams today after opening round 64s. This is the 16th green. Why the fuck would he even try? Just fucking like The uh, flags <laughs> flying stiffly in the breeze. And Pat Perez chuntering away to himself, not particularly pleased with his effort on 16. The four aces are 19 under. That is good for third place, and Pat Perez is counting at the moment, despite being one over today. Cam Smith. On the tenth green for birdie. Yeah. Approaching the final third of today's round at Live Golf Las Vegas, the second round of three, of course. The Crushers lead the way in the team competition. Dustin Johnson making moves individually as well. Doesn't like that one. That's his tee shot at 12, the par three. We've seen a bunch of people in that bunker. Now Bryson teed off at four. He's reached 16 here and has another chance for birdie. He's birdied eight of his opening 12. That includes as well one bogey. He's opened up a two-stroke lead as it stands over Dustin Johnson. Here's an opportunity to make it three. I'll tell you what, Arlo, he is not pulling back. He's attacking every pin today, showing no fear just confidence in his game. Right to left putt. Is this Greenbrier all over again? 
Just thinking that. 13 holes in round two. Bryson DeChambeau has birdied nine of them. He's 11 under for the competition. He leads by three. He just gets into that groove. Yeah. And he's virtually unstoppable. Uh huh. Held one of a birdie at 14. Over the hump at 15, the ridge that runs through the center of this green, Anirban Lahiri. Should never have been in this position, David. He's only about 70 yards from the pin for his third. And he just, just didn't come out right, and then it caught the, the slope, took it away from the pin. This is a tough one to judge. Yeah. Well, it's going to pick up speed. Needs to slow down. Well, Ian Poulter is a majestic. He is one under par for his tournament so far here in Las Vegas. This for birdie at four. Looked like it was going to stop. It didn't. And it rolls in. Andy Ogletree. Winner of the International Series Order of Merit, so promoted to the Live Golf League for 2024. He's a member of the High Flyers, and that was his birdie at nine. All right, buddy, let's see it. John Rahm is playing the 18th. He started on number six. So he still has the easiest hole on the course ahead of him. Number one, the par five as well. Backstop behind the flag. Of course, it comes out perfect. <laughs> All right. And that doesn't look at it. It's fucking muddy. Oh, Woo. Well, that. Okay. That's not usually a good sign. Paul Casey for a welcome birdie here at 14. Yes. Not quite as fluent as his opening round of 64 today for Paul Casey, but he's seven under par within four of the lead. team in three years for Taylor Gooch part of the champion four aces in year one the runner-up range goes last year where he was the individual champion and now he's with team smash Dustin Johnson his second shot at 12 now Peter Uline has a chance to get to eight under par and a tie for second with Dustin Johnson behind Bryson DeChambeau And he takes it. Check in on Adrian Maroc on the green at 12. You know, we've talked about the Elvis uh, residency before it was residency at the former Hilton behind us. We talked so much about what else is happening in town this week. Vegas is also famous for something else. Also, a lot of uh, back in the day, this was the home of so many of the heavyweight title bouts. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We have yeah. one on the cards tomorrow. Right here. DeShambo, Johnson, Rom sneaking up there. There was a time where Caesar's Palace was a mecca for heavyweight title fights. And they had a few at the Hilton. I think they had a couple at the convention center. Uh, and in my lifetime, I lived here when Evil Knievel tried jumping the fountains at Caesar's Palace and broke every single bone in his body.
Let's take you to the 15th fairway. Matthew Wolf, his second shot. It's the par five. Come on. Asking for it to draw. Terrell Adden, even par on the round today, stuck in neutral. It's the battle of the beards there between him and DJ. Good par save. Overjoyed. Let's take you to the 12th hole, Dustin Johnson. This for par. Yeah, he played a beautiful bunker shot to here. is taking most of the headlines so far today eight under through 13 but DJ is ticking along quite nicely he's five under for his round so far today also through 13 he's three back of DeChambeau the tee at 16 Peter Uline three back of our leader Bryson DeChambeau 182 yards very good line needs the distance it's got it It's just playing on its number. Yeah. Next up is Taylor Gooch. Seventh last season in our penultimate regular season events in Chicago, and then second in a playoff to Brooks Kepka in Jeddah, and that meant he was crowned individual champion ahead of Cam Smith. Bryson DeChambeau is having one of those days today. He's eight under par through 13 holes. Another remarkable round of golf from this man. That was his second shot of 14. This is his third shot at 15. Another birdie there. He teed off earlier at hole number four, so he will finish at three. This is his birdie at 16. He's still got one par five to play. And this is his second shot at 17. Well, he's got a pretty clear shot. It's got no more than a wedge. No problems carrying the trees in front of him. And with today's hole location, it's on the back right, so gives him a little more room, better angle. Looks like it's lying a little into the green, so yeah, sometimes that might just flutter out of here instead of yeah. jumping. Yeah. But he's got some strength. John Rahm at 18 for birdie. Wasn't pleased with his second shot to say the least. That speed's good. Firm enough.
Abraham Ansas having a fine week so far. This for birdie at 10 a few moments ago to get it to six under par. Woo. Took a while to get going last season, Abraham Ansa, but had an excellent second half to the season. And DJ has reached the tee at 13. Fifteen and Bubba for birdie from long distance. Disappointed with par there. Mickelson, his second out at six. Two under for the tournament. Jars it on the fly, just a few inches behind the hole. Fortunate that it missed the flag stick. And just three feet away for birdie. Well, Matthew Wolf did not play a particularly good pitch shot from behind the green, as this left for birdie. for any fumbles around the green. That certainly helps. Brooks at the first. That's his third shot into the par five. Oh! oh. Yeah, hard to know whether that was lucky or not. That almost like it hit the top of the flag stick yeah. right into the flag. It hits the flag stick itself without the flag. I think that ricochets a lot farther away. Jason Kokrak of Smash GC level par today. This for birdie at 15. Smash in fourth place. Two shots outside the podium at the moment. That was a little energetic. Carson at the 17th here with a birdie opportunity. Such a huge advantage for him. Even when he do miss fairways out here, he bombs it so far down. Just has a wedge, which makes things a little simpler. First 10 feet of this putt's going to push right and straighten out in the last 15 feet. Out of his stance pretty quickly after that one. Not a bad putt, though. Cam Smith is creeping up the pylon. If the former Open champion is capable of creeping up a pylon, when he starts draining putts, everybody notices. And he is six under par, the Ripper GC captain. DJ at 13. Go. Let's get back there. He knew it was a little shy in the air. Whip. This is a few moments ago. Peter Uline for birdie at 16. He stays three back at Bryson DeChambeau. Now live. And Taylor Gooch for birdie. Yeah, a lovely tee shot that, and you used the back edge of the green to bring the ball back about six feet closer to the hole. And this is a good opportunity. It's going to get it to the holes downhill all the way. Started dead straight, but it went right on him. 
Well, the Live Golf League has had a number of individual playoffs, but nothing like the four-hole one that ended in darkness last weekend between Sergio Garcia and Waco Neiman. 57 holes down, and they still can't be separated, and now it's decision time. We, we asked the players, you know, hey, come back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And, and finish this. Yeah, I was getting dark, and I was like, oh, I don't... We got to finish this today. So definitely a lot of energy there on, on the 18th green there in Mayakoba. Probably encouraging them to maybe get them a little more. Sir, you look at me saying, I'm good if you're good. If you want to play one more. <laughs> here, we, here we go. And we go again for a fourth playoff hole. He had a great drive, and, and that, that put him in a great position. We had a good idea. But you couldn't, you couldn't really see the flag. Unfortunately, didn't hit a, um, didn't hit a good second shot. Miles, right? Well, that would have been so much better off in the sand. It was pretty dark, but the good thing that you were able to see the green because of the, the screen that they had. We hit a great shot. Oh, shot. Oh. Yeah, it looked like he might have had a chance of hitting the flag and maybe ended up stone dead or something like that. I knew I had to make this putt. Didn't want to wait and see if he was going to make his or miss it. A stunning show of character from Wacky Neiman. And, and obviously he, he made a great birdie. You know, I felt that pressure of being fighting for the tournament, which I was missing it for a while. This time went my way, which was sweet. I'm going to enjoy it. It was great. It was great. <laughs> And good for both of them, because the easiest thing in the world, I guess, would have been after three yeah. playoff holes to shake hands and say, we'll come back tomorrow and finish this thing off. They were both caught in the moment. This is Wako Neiman for eagle. <laughs> and a good birdie opportunity there to get to seven under par, and he's not out of it in Las Vegas either. But it created a moment of real sporting theater on the fourth playoff hole in virtual darkness, as you saw, and Wako Neiman became the 13th different individual winner. Bryson DeChambeau on the tee at 18, eight under par today through 14. The par is 70. He has four holes remaining, including this one, including a par five. Just saying. <laughs> He needs to play those four holes and four under in order to break 60. Wolfie on the tee at 16. A moment ago, Phil Mickelson for birdie at six. We showed you his uh, approach oh, shot. Yeah. Yeah. Phil, three under par. TJ was not uh, not happy with his second shot here at 13. But he has this to get to within two. Bubba on the 16th tee. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, man. Fabulous shot. Delightful from Bubba Watson. Kale Samoya of the Cleeks from Finland won the promotions event in Abu Dhabi to earn his place in the Live Golf League. That was for birdie at two. He's one under par. Cameron Tringali. At the moment, it's not the high flyers week, but Cameron with a birdie at two as well, and a salute to the gallery. This is the green at 15. It'll be Harold Varner next.
HV3 from miles away for birdie. Adrian Moronk for birdie at 13. DJ has left himself a little more than he wanted for par here at 13. Brother AJ will straddle the line. See which foot is higher than the other. to the green at 16 and Matthew Wolf for birdie this would get him into a tie for second place with DJ and Peter Uline so tie the range goats with the crushers on 23 under par Taylor Gooch from the left rough at 17. Yeah, got a nice kick back out the rough into the semi. Well, Peter Ulan smashed the drive up there as he often does. Just crept into the semi rough also. Not much room between the front bunker and the back bunker where this pin is situated and the angle he's coming in from. Hit a great shot of similar distance on the 15th out of the semi. Oh. Yeah, that'll work. They're all chasing Bryson DeChambeau. His second shot at 18. Gap wedge for Bryson. Hole location today is on the left side of the screen. Everything feeds towards the hole right of it. Has he worn that gap wedge out yet? Yeah, I think there must be a concave on that wedge. Welcome back inside the booth here at the Las Vegas Country Club. Delighted to be joined by Commissioner and CEO of the Lib Golf League. Of course, it is Greg Norman. Greg, delighted to have you with us. Hello. Great to see you. Now, Bryson DeChambeau, we saw it and you followed him, didn't you, in the final round when he went round in 58 to back up that 61 on Saturday. Just sensational scenes. He's at it again. This man, when he gets on a charge, is difficult to stop, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And this is the type of golf course where he will let go, right? He, uh, David just mentioned it a minute ago about the gap wedge being worn out. And, you know, he's driving the ball well enough to get it out there past all the trouble. There's no nothing off the tee unless he sprays a little bit left or right. But uh, he's, he's a very dangerous material guy. He loves this type of aggressive 
golf that he's playing. And he's a man in the Live Golf League who had a slow start, mm -hmm. had one or two issues with his form uh, as he transitioned across the Live Golf League, but then really about mid-season last season, changed his driver, 61-58 at Greenbrier, <laughs> then won at uh, Chicago. His crushers won the team title as well. There's something about him in Live Golf that, that really makes a lot of sense. Well, I think there's a lot of it to do. I take his play away, right? A lot of what he's doing is the team, the team camaraderie and the team spirit. He, he actually leans a lot on Paul Casey about how to go mm. about things and approach things. So I think that's absolutely fantastic, that energy that he's bringing. I've got to ask you, Greg, as well, about Caleb Surratt, who triple bogeyed 17 last week for Legion 13, his first professional event. Legion 13 were in the mix for the team title. And his response, he could have gone either of two ways mm -hmm. and he birded his final five holes and they won by four what a display of steel by the young man and he's backing that up here isn't yeah it? no absolutely i think you know we've all talked about it the last couple of weeks you know, he was in a dormitory a couple of weeks ago to where he is today i think it's fantastic but one thing that impresses me about him is his moxie and i think his moxie showed up just on that what you're talking about right uh kids got game uh john rahm recognized that in the kid and uh, look he's got a massive future ahead of him right now Taylor Gooch. Oh, oh, yes. You've been following Taylor a little bit today as he gets it to eight under par, our individual champion, Greg. Yeah, I just love his iron play. I, I like to watch Taylor play as much as David. I think he's probably one of the best iron players that we've got out here, maybe in golf, to be honest with you. And we're actually seeing, Greg, a, a lot of frustration out there from players that you, you wouldn't normally see it from. This golf course is holding its own. Yeah, it is, but I think they also realize there's no wind, um, perfect playing conditions, the greens are receptive, great speed, right? And they're not, uh, some of them are not performing or shooting under par the way they should do. But, uh, you know, there seems like a big spread, like what uh, yeah. Dustin's doing and Bryson's doing. And, uh, but, you know, like Paul, I followed him a little bit today. It's very unusual to see his inconsistency the way yes. he went about it. He's just been out of sorts today. You know, a good swing there with maybe half a club too much. John Rahm is rounding into form. He's seven under par now. Could he make his move tomorrow in his second Live Golf event? And Legion 13, who had such an excellent start to life in the Live Golf League. One event, one victory. Didn't, That's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's, it's interesting to see John. You know, he had a chance of winning the individual as well, right? But you know, when you when you fail on the individual, and then he can come back and, and be up there on the podium with his uh, team. That's a reflection of what the spirit is. Have you yeah. spoken to him about that sort of bittersweet moment? Because he bogeyed for the second time in three days, 17 and 18. Uh -huh. Had he just parred them, he would have been in the playoffs. So he had that sort of frustration about him. And then he realized that Tyrrell Hatton and Caleb yeah. Surratt and Kieran Vincent were doing the business and the end of the day spraying champagne. And that's a live golf in a nutshell. That's yeah. a live golf in a nutshell. And I did, no, I don't go and talk about the bad past. I talk about the good past. <laughs> so I didn't bring it up with him at all. <laughs> And he, he's continued to be frustrated today um, uh, a lot of the time and and still, you know, right in there. Yeah, we talked a little about his golf swing last week because I did walk around yes. and watch yeah. him. And um, you know, he, did, he knows he's got, um, he's a little steep, David. Mm -hmm. He's getting the, hitting the ball high on the club face, maybe one groove too high. That's why his ball flight is not the way he wants it to be. Well, Bryson is the man of the moment. His lead over Peter Uline is two. He started the day three under par. He's now 11 under par. He teed off at four. This is at 18. Well, this hole is cut in the kind of furrow that runs from right to left in this 18th green. David, I've been up there in uh, 54, Club 54, and I haven't seen one person read the putt right yet. They think it's going to break more to the for, to Bryson's right now, but most of the players are to their left, and they've not one person read this right. They're, they're difficult to read. There's no question about it. You know, we've seen a lot of head scratching. Meanwhile, at 16, the par three, Paul Casey for what would be a very welcome birdie. 
joint overnight leader after round one with Harold Varner the third. Both have struggled somewhat today. Now on the 18th tee, and Peter Uline. Man, he smashes it. Yeah, he does. He, and straight, too. I've followed him as well today. Sixteen and Thomas Peters. He'll stay four back. He had to be on very, very good form to count for the range goes on day one. Peter Uline. 66 four and a par didn't count he was the odd man out yeah. after a trio of 65s at the moment it's Bubba who's one under who doesn't count for them but the goats have a lead of one back to six at uh, the 18th Suan yeah Pat drove it into the left side close to where the fan village is took a little while which is what Bryson was waiting for Pretty sure he was also waiting for Pat to putt so he can get a read. Both him and Graham jumping in quickly. Phil for back to back birdies. Get in the hole! Yeah! Four and a par. He couldn't, could he? <laughs> he could. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. So Bryson to get to 12 under par. He should have a pretty good idea what this putt's going to do. Doesn't do very much at the beginning and moves right at the end. Greg, what do you think his mindset is like right now? When you're shooting so low and you're playing so well, like what's going through his mind, you think? Just keep the hammer down, keep the pedal to the metal and suck up that go-go juice, right? He's, uh, he feels it, he's got a great feel for the greens, obviously he's driving the ball fantastic. His mindset's just going to be, I'm going to go as low as I possibly can. Five first next for Bryson DeChambeau. Dustin Johnson, he's within three of the lead. Five at the par today, he's second at 14. There's Bryson, and he will head to the first tee with a two-stroke lead. Over 13, Cam Smith. Yeah, lovely shot. Here's his ripper GC teammate, Matt Jones, for birdie at 11. Ripper at the moment are in seventh place. They're six shots off the podium. But all four scout, uh, scores will count tomorrow on Championship Saturday. So we can all change very quickly. Cyril Hatton of Legion 13 for birdie at 13. And they are going to be challenging again in the final round. Greg Matthew Wolf seems just so much more comfortable. He is, David. He's found a good place. Obviously, we all know the, the saga of last year and the, the, the chemistry that wasn't there within yeah. his team, but he's in a really good place now. So this is the first tee. It's a par five. Bryson DeChambeau 
Well, for some, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Pat Perez has the honour. But at 18, Pat Perez is three under par for the competition. Had a rocky start to his second round. He was four over after his first six holes. This is the first tee. Oh, you missed it. Way left on the 18th. Hoping for a better drive here. That looks pretty good. score is counting for the four aces in round two level par for the day John Rahm at two second shot Bryson T at one stand back said <laughs> this plays like a par four I don't think he's hit anything longer than a nine iron into a par five oh, he took an extra leap at that one Yeah, the bounds is very close over there too, David. Yeah, yeah, it is. Dustin Johnson is stalking this one. Dustin Johnson is enjoying a fine second round at the Las Vegas Country Club. He has another birdie opportunity here at 14, and this will get him to within two of our leader, Bryson DeChambeau. The four races were a tad embarrassed about their effort in Mexico, an uncharacteristic 12th place for them out of 13, and they've bounced back successfully here so far. Yeah, I think there was a bit of a conversation had on the plane flight from Mexico to Las Vegas, I can tell you that. <laughs> And I thought Harold Varner's bounce back as well from yeah. 54th and last place yesterday to Carter yeah. 64. And they are an alpha team, aren't they? Let's They're be honest, the four races. Yep. That was impressive. Here's Anaban Lahiri. That's his third shot, though. Drove in the bunker, could only advance at 30 yards. Matthew Wolf for birdie over at 17. Oh, that'll put the Wolf amongst the range guns. Yes, exactly. He's not a three back. John, John Rahm for birdie. Yeah. softer that might have caught the left edge and toppled in cam for birdie at 13. taylor gucci a second shot got a good break hit his tee shot into the middle of the kid's zone got a relief from all the obstruction and he now got a clear shot Peter Uline next. After a fabulous tee shot, he's reduced his difficult hole into a, a now a good birdie opportunity. He can hit the same wedge type shots he hit on the last two. <laughs> Brooks with his second shot at the third.
Smashing fourth place at the moment. Now a brand new team with fantastic new merchandise, new players for which to cheer, familiar teams with new faces and new logos. The team gear is all available on site at the merch tent or of course online. Just go to a Live Golf League event or log on to shop.livegolf.com and grab a Legion hoodie, a Range Goats quarter zip, a Crusher's golf towel or even a four aces polo. 13 teams, 54 players, dozens of items that will make yours or your golf buddies day. There are no Ripper GC budgie smugglers remaining. They no. are sold out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I got the last pair. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Herbert's caddy, or is it David Letterman? I can't quite decide. It's hard to know. <laughs> what a character, old father time. But Lucas Herbert's going well for Ripper GC as well today. He's two under par, but actually not counting because the original three, Smith, Leishman and Jones, are all three under par as Ripper GC climbed the pylon. David, the three-hole stretch and Greg for Bryson here. Yeah, they're, uh, they're playing at par or under, you know, this next few holes, especially the first, you know, as a hole that they really, really want to take advantage of. Just the two par fives here. Second hole playing at even par. The third just under. Yeah, they're not difficult holes at all, David, as you pointed no. out. And I think the guys, you know, they can hit drivers, both on uh, all of them, especially on the shorter holes, three and four, or two and three, excuse me. They can really pummel it down there where they just have a little gap wedge. Walco Neiman, the hero of Mayacoba, Mexico. This for Birdie, he's having a terrific round today as well. Has he got enough? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Those scenes last week, and we just showed it a few yeah. moments ago, Greg, where they shook hands and said, yeah, let's go again yeah. for the fourth playoff hole in virtual darkness. The whole scene was iconic in our young live golf life. That yeah, was one and, of the great. You know, it's amazing. Television just made it look brighter than ever. Than yes. <laughs> By lighting up the scoreboard in pure white, just uh, it was just lit up the 18th green. But I thought that was a, such a cool scene with the sun setting. And I think, uh, to be honest with you, I think Sergio was kind of like embarrassed into it going in because they were <laughs> debating whether to go back one more hole, and the the, the, the gallery were just going one more hole. One more hole and say, what, what, what can you do? Say no? Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, old Bryson had to lay up there from the bunker. He will not be happy with that. Yeah, I agree with that, David. Eighteen green, Taylor Gooch has played himself into contention in Las Vegas. Yeah, he's been working on his game with Boyd Summerhays. They've been going over to Las Vegas National, where there's a full range, hitting a lot of drivers. This will be some birdie after that tee shot. Yeah, hello. did his tee shot hit a tree or did he just snap hook it? He tried to hit a big cut, never cut. Yeah. Well, Brooks Kepka trying to make a move before Championship Saturday. Captain of Smash GC, of course. Big man has been quiet. He's four under par. That was his birdie at four. And Smash a 19 under two shots behind the four aces for a place on the podium. Wow. Didn't expect to see this with you, line. Oh, oh, he's, he's got, got a foot a, off the green. Has he got a straight face club out there, or is that one of his, it's, no, it's one of his wedges? Yeah, he's going to belly it. He's going to blade it, yeah. Must be lying kind of funky. Came off nicely. Either that or he broke his putter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he still has the putter. That was strange. Dustin Johnson on the tee at 17. The guys were complaining there's a bit of mud on their ball, so there might have been some mud on the back of the ball. On the where back where he was going to make contact. Exactly yeah, right. yeah, that makes sense. Great news for you, David. The range goes are chewing up the Las Vegas <laughs> no, Country Club. No, no. I, not one to say I told you so. <laughs> Too clear at the top of the team competition at the moment. That was Peter Uline's tee shot at eight. He's in the mix for the individual title here as well. Thomas Peters has found his form here in Las Vegas. The Belgian, 
his second shot into the seventh hole. He is counting at the moment today on two under par, and Matthew Wolf is having a great week so far. That was for birdie at 15. Wolfie, three under today, eight under for the competition, and the Range Goats lead by two. This was a moment ago, Harold Varner. Oh, that one just glides by the left edge. Greg, thanks for joining us. I'm sure we'll catch up before too long. Yes, Enjoy thank the you, rest guys. Of we'll do. Live Golf Las Vegas. We'll be back in a few moments' time. Bryson, his third shot here in one. He was not happy when he was walking towards the bunker for his second shot. Had some words with himself. Now, hole location's in a tricky position today. All the way back right. Got to watch for that first bounce. Oh, this is heading left off the pin. Yeah, that has kind of put a hitch in his kilt. <laughs> This is 14, David Pooge, but it's Caleb Suran actually, another youngster who's going to play first, is it? No, it's not, it's David <laughs> Pooge. Why don't I just who's on shut first? up for a minute to wait to see who's playing the shot? Pooge is on first. Lovely shot. Matthew Wolf, his second shot at 18. He's had a huge tee shot down here. Takes advantage of it. John Rahm, his second shot at three. He's seven under par for the competition, just four behind Bryson DeChambeau, who's having a fabulous second round so far. And that's nicely done by John Rahm and a birdie opportunity there. DJ going at the 15th green and that is oh it takes a huge bounce a little unlucky there maybe next to the first green and we're on Bryson DeChambeau watch Suan aren't we who's having a fabulous round he's opened up a two shot advantage at the top of the pylon his crushes are in second place what's the yeah, situation down there yeah he's uh, not happy that he didn't take full advantage of his length here on the first Missed a fairway, had to lay up. Didn't hit a good wet shot into the screen. Said yesterday in his post round interview, his wedges were not on point. Well, they were pretty good today. 
other than this one shot here on the first, I'm just waiting for Graham, who's at just the back of this screen. Whilst we wait for Graham, why don't we take you to the 18th green, Bubba Watson. Yeah, Bubba has left it up on the top shelf here. This is an awkward putt coming down the slope. Struggled early today, Bubba. After his opening round 65, but he's one under par here on Friday now. Punch of break to the left as it descends. If it descends, there it goes. Yeah, good speed, great weight. We just about got that to the top of the slope. It toppled over and still almost got there. John Rahm for birdie at three. Look out. The Masters champion is eight under par. He's to within three of Bryson DeChambeau. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow much. No, no, not at all. DeChambeau, you lie, Rahm, DJ, our champion, Gooch, Wolf. Saying that if anything closer to Pat's more. You saw G Max. Oh, Jerry, that was expected, wasn't it? You always knew the heavyweights would turn it up today, especially with the scoring conditions. No wind. Oh, Bryson's got a double breaker here. It's mainly going to move to his right. Get it to nine under here at 18. <laughs> well, that never turned. That has to turn left from there. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Bet against Cam Smith going low on the final day to get into contention. You saw on the left-hand side of your screens him get it to seven under par, and that's how we did it. Birdie at 14. Wow, there is so much happening. There are so many storylines, so many strands here in the closing stages of day two of Live Golf Las Vegas. We need to start with Bryson DeChambeau. Look, we were unashamedly on sub-60 watch again. He has just missed that opportunity at the par five to yeah. give him, put himself in a, in a great position. It's not done yet, but regardless, he's going low on day two. Yeah, he's going low. I mean, that, but that first hole has robbed him of some momentum. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see what his tee shot looks like at the next uh, but uh, yeah I mean he can he can still shoot 61 62 no oh, without question and, uh, and uh, as Greg said he's able to take advantage of this golf course in a way others can't now it is a tight course so if he's spraying it at all and the longer you hit it the crookeder it goes uh, it wouldn't play to his strengths but he's obviously dialed in with the with the full swing very well well he's eight under with a couple to play on day two let's take a look at some of his highlights birdied his first hole the fourth <laughs> Crushers are going really well as well. Level with the range goats on 24 under. But we've seen Bryson do this before. Remember Greenbrier at 61 in round two. Followed that up with a quite sensational 58 to win his first Live Golf title. And that was his second into 14. He was absolutely cruising at this stage. And then his third shot into 15. Three under at the start of play, three strokes back of the overnight leaders, and he has taken control of matters here on day two, and he has reached the second tee. 
two to play for Bryson. He leads yeah. by two. Try the bunker on the left. Yeah. I'm oh, here with the waterfall. Waterfall's fine. As David said, felt like the first hole just killed the momentum. See how big a leap he takes at this. That's headed left. Just finds that thicker rye, but it seems to be sitting up. So Bryson has a hole and a half to play. When we look at tomorrow, and it's far from a done deal, where is the main threat to Bryson DeChambeau going to come from? Well, when you look at what Bryson's going, what's going through his mind right now isn't breaking 60. He's trying to distance himself as much as he can from those other guys. He's got you line behind him. We, yeah. we know what good, how good a player he is. Maybe not the pedigree of a Johnson or a, or even Gooch from last year. It's certainly not Rom, but all those guys, every one of them has a chance. They all have one thing in common. They're all pretty long, except I guess you would say Gooch, not the longest. The rest are all very, very long players on this yeah. course. Yeah, they are. They can drive it past all of the trouble. Um, you know, Gooch maybe not so much, but uh, you know he makes up for it. Oh yes, he from does. 100 yards in. Okay. Well, yeah. Team and competition so. should go all the way as well. Here's Chirrell Hatton. He's six under par. Remember, he went very low in Mexico in the final round of 64, the lowest round of the day. And look at that. That's how he got to six under par. An eagle for Chirrell Hatton. Great news for Legion 13 as well. He's in the mix. DJ, it's got a little eagle chip here. Oh, that just came out right. soft. Still did okay. Well, Dustin Johnson with a great chance of getting within two of Bryson DeChambeau. You are looking at the 11th hole. Martin Keimer, captain of the cliques. Second shot. One over par for his week so far. The cliques are in ninth place. DJ made his birdie. And Eugenio Chacara. Solid week so far for the young Spaniard. A member of Sergio's Fireballs, his second shot into the second hole. That's an absolute beauty. He's three under par for the competition. Charles Howell III had a solid week last week. The Crushers finished in second spot. He'll have a big say in the outcome of the team contest tomorrow. That's his second into the tenth. One under par for the competition, but the Crushers at the moment tied for top spot with the Range Goats. and Varner have birdie putts here. Peters has one for par. Oh, I've got a funny story to tell you. Taylor Gooch was standing over second shot with a wood from a severe uphill line. I was standing next to Peter Ulan. I said, I can't believe he's hitting this club. Peter says, I can. The guy made $38 million last year. I'd be hitting everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going for everything. He said, Fair enough. <laughs> scintillating 64 on the opening day he actually birdied his first hole the first earlier on it's been something of a struggle since one over for his round but a chance here to get him back to seven under par yes he's not counting at the moment for the crushers 
how about the top seven in the team competition separated by just seven shots right now and all four scores will count tomorrow could be a wild one Peters for power This is the second hole at the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Country Club. And Graham McDowell. Well, that ball's sitting up, but downhill light. Cross hole location. Before Bryson plays his shot. Oh, came screaming out of there. Peter Uline at one. That. Now it is Bryson at two. Love wedge. Ball sitting down slightly. Has that firepower to launch this up in the air, though. Get it to land softly. Oh, be good. This looks pretty good. Second shot into the water. Here's DJ on the 16th tee. Yeah, uh, that'll come back a little. To the fourth and John Rahm. Teed off at six today. Six on the pass so far for his round. Oh, so close. Yeah, he's so trying high. to play a cut around that pine tree. And coming out of the rough. Just so hard to get that spin on the ball. In the team competition, Patrick Reed is counting for the four aces. A much improved display from him today after his 72 yesterday. And this got the four aces into a tie for second place. Beautifully done. A birdie to a 12 for Patrick Reed. He's four and a par overall. The aces currently on the podium. That was Peter Uline for birdie at one, and yeah. he's 10 under par. Great up and down there after a bad pitch shot. Right in the throat. Just like left edge. Well, the Live Golf League continues to improve on an amazing on-site fan experience. To see it for yourself in 2024, scan that QR code on the screen for tickets to future events. Next, we are going to Hong Kong as part of a double header. We'd love you to be with us there in April. We're back in Miami, looking forward to a, another great week in South Florida. Scan that QR code and come and join the fun. Okay. 
Brooks on the tee at five. Beautiful. Green at two. Bryson, who birdied nine of his first 13 holes today. Well, I just caught him staring at the leaderboard. It's just at the side of the screen. Well, he's plateaued to and by his standards today with three consecutive pars, but here's another birdie opportunity at two. of the momentum that he built up earlier in his round, but Bryson still leads by one. Back at the first, Bubba should be able to reach this green in two, the par five. Looks like he's playing a fade, David. <laughs> But it always looks like he's playing a fade. That's true, yeah. Even when he's hitting a hook. Uh, right yeah, into the heart of the green. Pat Perez has hung in there today after a horrible start. Four over through his first six holes. That was for birdie. Fucking, he's got it back it to there. one under par. Ah, and he gives it, himself man. a bit of a telling off. At the 16th, the pole, Adrian Moronk. shot here at the fourth he's having a very good day is it about to get even better you bet it is John Rahm charging in Las Vegas he's nine under par he's two behind Bryson DeChambeau and the momentum is with the Masters champion We are back. On the tier three, Pat Perez. Pat Perez playing with Graham McDowell and of course, Bryson DeChambeau and this is their final hole of round two. Just an iron off this tee, 269 to the second right bunker. He's missed the last two fairways. Certainly wants to find this one. Finish off on a good note. Go get past Pat's ball. <laughs> Just misses a divot as well. This is the 16th green. Dustin Johnson moving into contention. Six under par so far today. He has just the 17th to play after this. And if this drops, he will be within one of Bryson DeChambeau. We were on sub 60 watch for Bryson for a little while. Four straight pars has put paid to that, but he's still gonna go very low today with one hole to play. But it's shaping up to be a classic final day here in Las Vegas. Mm. DJ is going to be a huge part of it. A few 
few moments ago, if you weren't with us, John Rahm did this. Yeah, and this was not an easy shot at all. Tiny little flop shot, just perfect. That was for Purdy at the fourth. He's seven under for his round and moving well into contention as well. Rahm has birdied three of his last four holes. Oh, a lovely shot from Taylor Gooch there. Cam Smith playing his third at 15. Don't count this man out yet. You referenced it earlier, guys. Keep it in the fairway. The putter is yeah. as hot as anybody in the world on a daily oh. basis. Yes. Yeah, if he can drive it in the fairway tomorrow, he's definitely still got a chance. Matthew Wolf for Eagle at one to get it to 10 under par. Lovely lag putt. That dance card at the top of the pylon is getting quite crowded <laughs> heading into the championship Saturday as it is. And there's a man who looks very comfortable in his own skin as a Thanks, range coat. Matthew Wolf, nine under. Thanks, man. And as we look at the top of that pylon, David, you, you know, a lot of times with one round, one round to play, you think guys five or six back have an outside chance, but not when you have to pass that many players at yeah. that level of skill. Yeah, that's Matt Jones. Oh. This burns the right edge. Brooks Kepka for birdie at five. He's got one hole to play after this. Our lead group starting the day that teed off number one. Uh, has finished and been in the clubhouse for a good 15 minutes. That's how fast they were. Dom commented on it earlier. Everybody's still playing well within their scheduled time. Oh, yeah. Well, Brooks playing for himself, but of course, his team as well. Smash GC, 20 under par, four back of the podium. Oh, the second hole not. Peter Uline found the water with his tee shot, so this will be his third. Yeah, just took a while to determine where it crossed into the penalty area. He's dropped it now. Line looks excellent. Yeah, nice. Good. Doesn't waste time once he makes his decision. Headed left, it's gonna miss the green. Bryson with a second here on the third, his final hole. Gap wedge, hole locations, and a bit of a small bowl on the right side of the screen. Can certainly throw a dart. Pin. He will need to throw that gap wedge in the refrigerator <laughs> tonight as much as he's used it. Well, the bright lights are shining at the top of the pylon here in Las Vegas. Bryson DeChambeau holding on to a one stroke lead. He's on his final hole of the day. If Uline makes bogey or worse, and he's likely to make at least bogey, we right, have the chance for almost a hand vote for the final pairing, final grouping tomorrow of D. Shambo, DJ, and this man. That heavyweight title fight at its finest. Jason Kokrak ended his day very well indeed. Eagle at one. Jason Kokrak, eight under par going into the final round tomorrow. Cam Smith for birdie at 15. Oh, he does it. There's something you don't see every day. 
Dustin Johnson is on the tee at 17. His final half of the day. We're going to the second hole and Peter Uline's fourth. Oh, he's got an uphill lie, so that helps because the green is three, four feet above him. It starts to run away from him, but there's enough room for him to work with. Just needs to land it three, four feet on the green. He'll drop one. <laughs> this is a Vincent brother on the green at six. Well, that would be the iron head, Vincent. Scott. He says the introduction of his brother, Kieran, who plays for Legion 13, is just extra motivation be losing to your kid brother no and he's one for one in team titles mm. Look at the third green and the final hole of the day for our leader, Bryson DeChambeau. He's pacing out his birdie putt. Pat Perez there as well. There's Bryson. He has surged to the top of the pylon with some typically brilliant golf on day two. Day three under par, eight under for his round so far. And if he can put this one away, it will be yet another 61 in round two for Bryson DeChambeau. And we all know what happens after he cards 61 in the second round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he did say yesterday that he saw 60 out here. Really has come close. Oh. <laughs> I think he thought it was in. He'll have to make do with a sixty two. John Rahm, second shot at the fifth. His final hole. Look at that. Get in there. Yeah, that looks simple. Looks like a 63 for John Rahm on day two. Taylor Gooch. This was a few moments ago. For Birdie at two. 66 today for Taylor Gooch. He's eight under par. 17th hole for reigning DP World Tour Player of the Year, Adrian Moronk. Six back of the lead, his last hole to play. That's not his best. DJ will be next. Well, if he can produce a birdie here on his final hole, he'll go into the final round tied with Bryson DeChambeau and 11 under. An act of funny it looked like. But... And Nobody's laughing. He's got a reasonable chance of doing it. Yes. Yeah. He didn't seem overly happy with that swing either. Dom, we'll send it down to you. 
Peter, a tough week last week, but looks like you've knocked the rust off. You must be happy with your first two rounds here. Still got a little rust in there. I still got a foul ball every now and then. But no, I mean, it's it's been better the, first, the last two days. Um, scoring well, like, scoring clubs have been good. Wedges have been good. Putting are good. So, um, but yeah, no, it's it's been better. I feel like I've been able to play golf this week, which is nice. Are you surprised that scoring is not as crazy low as we all thought it would be at the start of the week? Yes. Yeah. I thought there would be somebody in the 50s this week, to be honest with you. So, um yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised by it. I mean, it's got to be because of got to be the weather. So, you've had four on our finishes out here. You ready for the W tomorrow? That's the plan. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited for the opportunity. Uh, it's nice to be with Wolfie over there, just screaming at me. So it's been, <laughs> it's good. And uh, yeah, I mean, it should be fun. Obviously, I, Bryson and uh, DJ and Rom, I think, are up there. So to be able to chase those couple, those guys down and get your first win is pretty off, would be pretty awesome. Good luck tomorrow. Play well. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. Any more laid back, he'd be lying flat on the ground, wouldn't he? Peter Uline. Kazuma for birdie. This is at the fifth. Bryson yeah. made his par to round off a 62, eight under par, and the lead at the moment on 11 under. Here's Phil. God, darn it. Phil played the Pro-Am the other day with Will Levis, the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans. Let's send it down to Sue Ann with Bryson. Bryson, fantastic round today, eight under par. At one point, we were on a sub-60 round watch. Oh, Did that cross your mind? Uh, absolutely. It was uh, quite disappointing the way I finished off, to be, to be honest. Uh, I wasn't really hitting it particularly well, but placing it in the right places, and I made more putts today. Um, it was a weird, weird day because I just felt like I could shoot sub 60s all day and it was going that way after 16 and then I just got uncomfortable for some reason uh, with the golf swing a little bit and wedges weren't flying the way they should and got unlucky on one and uh, that's a 62 for you. Did the thought of the 59 I'll made you to, nervous? I was trying to shoot 57 after hearing that uh, <laughs> Corn Ferry Tour number the other uh, yesterday. <laughs> so uh, that was, you know, one of the most... Um, suboptimal 62s I've ever had, but I'll take a 62 any day of the week. <laughs> well, Crushes, you guys are hunting for your first season win this weekend. What is the secret behind the Crushes? How do you guys keep chugging along and being in contention? <sighs> We're like that mosquito that uh, just keeps <laughs> nagging at you all the time. We're just right there around you all the time, no matter what. It's that dang mosquito and you can't get it. That's the way I feel like we are. Uh, it's probably a reference that'll get memed or something, but um, that's all right. I mean, we're, uh, we're a pretty special group of guys. I love the guys and uh, they always work hard every day and they, they fight for every single shot. And I am extremely proud of every single one of them. And they uh, come out here and play well. All right, thanks for the chat. Good luck tomorrow. Cameron Smith, second at 16. So Bryson ended with five pars for a, and I quote, suboptimal 62. Yes. <laughs> Tyrrell Hatton to put here on 17 before Dustin Johnson has the chance to tie Bryson DeChambeau and 11 under. Mr. Angry strikes again. If you've yet to sign up for Live Golf Plus, you're missing out on something quite special. Download the app from the App Store, just like you would Netflix, Paramount Plus, or Peacock. But unlike those, the beauty of Live Golf Plus is that it's free for most of the world. Once there, you can enjoy live, commercial-free Live Golf League action, or you can replay every single round we've ever played. For a golf fan, it's absolute heaven. Dustin Johnson to tie the lead going into the final round. This to match Bryson DeChambeau's 62.
these champions deliver once more 62 for Bryson and now 62 for Dustin Johnson he was five under par on the back nine a 30 for his final nine holes DJ and he will go into championship Saturday level with Bryson on 11 under par Bryson DJ Ram final round pairing and we are pretty close to confirming that would be the case Jerry aren't we that's well, not confirmed yet it's at least two of them there is a system by which they they break that tie at nine under although I believe it's looking from what I understand pretty positive for Rom to be the one in that final grouping Sixty three for John Rahm today. He's nine under par. Level with Peter Uline. Here's Laurie Cantor to get to eight under. One of the two live golf wild cards right now. Yeah, he's just been sort of sneaking along under the radar today. He tied 15th with Taylor Gooch in Mayakoba last week, Laurie, so he's just trying his best to take advantage of every opportunity. Lee Westwood, two under for the tournament, playing his final hole, number nine. A bit of anxiety about this point because you're hitting to a sliver of a green over a water hazard. If you hit it long, you're almost always going to make bogey here. Pitching straight down cliff. There's Ann Poulter on the green at 11. As you know, there's a big game coming up on Sunday. You didn't think we'd get through the week without our players making Super Bowl picks, did you? These are the predictions that you need. We asked our players who's going to win the big game. I think the Jaguars. No kidding, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I gotta go with some allegiance here. A California boy, average of place up three nine. Uh, I think San Francisco is going to win the big game. Uh, my family's. Big Niner fans, and I think Brock Purdy is one of the greatest stories in the NFL, and I think they're going to win. I'm going to go to the 49ers. The Chiefs. Uh, I would I would say the Chiefs. Uh, I would say the Chiefs. I'm hoping for the 49ers. I think the 49ers. Can't bet against Pat Mahomes. 49ers. The Chiefs. But I'm going to put all my money on uh, Patrick Mahomes. Got to take the 49ers. Uh, I like Mahomes and the Chiefs. I'm going to go with Kansas City. I will go with the Chiefs. I'm going to take the Niners. I think the Kansas Chiefs are going to win. 49ers. The Niners. I'm going to go with Chiefs. Take Mahomes in the fourth quarter. The 49ers. Yeah, it's hard to go against Pat Mahomes. I'm going Chiefs. I think it's either going to be a 49ers blowout, or if it's going to be close, <laughs> Kansas City is going to win. It's a close game. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking Mahomes, Kelsey, and Taylor Swift by three. Ripper GC, if they were an NFL team, that's a cool looking helmet right there. Yeah. That's what we need, full contact golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should be allowed to play defense and team golf. Yeah. 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 Still a couple of uh, groups out there at seven and at nine. Scott Vincent of the Ironheads, level par for his round so far. He can get it back into the red numbers with a birdie here. But the, it's a foregone conclusion. The Super Bowl is, is scripted as well, so Niners are going to win. Much like the ace, I guarantee you, tomorrow in the team playoff at Live Golf. That one slides by from Scott Vincent. Thank 
you look at the bottom left hand side of your screens as well and the team competition is shaping up beautifully going into the final day where all four scores will count that's new for 2024 in the live golf league which means you're only as good as your worst player on the day the goats and the four aces level 26 under par both underachieved dramatically mexico last week They've got it back on track here in Las Vegas. The Crushers, 24 under. Bryson DeChambeau and his boys, who finished second last week. Brooks is smashed, 23 under. And you would not bet against Legion 13 going back to back, or indeed Torque, who came third last week. They were leading going into the final round. They won four times last season. This is Lee Westwood for birdie at nine. The Majestics need all the help they can get at the moment down in 13th. like a pair of 69s for Lee Westwood to under par. Kieran Vincent. Two ahead of his brother for Vincent brother bragging rights in Las Vegas. This for the birdie to end his round on the seventh and make that three. not counting at the moment for Legion 13 and he can't improve their situation even if he puts this away which he does Legion 13 19 under par going into the final day in fifth place Sergio Garcia playing along with Brandon Grace. This for par at nine. At a sixty five. the final putt of the day. It'll be Sergio Garcia, who's three under par, the man who forced four playoff holes less than a week ago. Maya Koba, runner-up to Waco Neiman. He could end his day with a birdie here at the ninth. So we are just about done. Dustin Johnson is addressing the media in his press conference live. Why don't we take a listen? It's one of the, obviously it's old school. It's you know narrow. You gotta you gotta drive it well. Um, you know, but coming after coming off of last week, it doesn't seem that narrow. So um, I think last week was good prep for this week because you you know it's obviously really important just to hit in the fairway. If you're in the fairway, you're gonna have a lot of nice looks of birdie, especially if you're controlling the golf ball. So you shot, uh, let's see, uh, eight, eight under today, right? Yeah. yeah, eight under today. So did you think coming out here that that was a number that was gettable for you? Yeah, I mean, the course is, you know, obviously the greens are kind of the defense. There's some slopes and a lot of sections, but 
if you're controlling the golf ball, you know, you get a lot of short irons in your hand if you're driving it straight. So, um, yeah, I mean, I had a, you know, kept it between the trees pretty well the first two days and gave myself a lot of nice looks of birdie. So that's, yeah, I mean, it's definitely doable. So the four aces are currently tied for first place as well. Uh, what is your strategy with the team tonight? I know your boys are playing well, but all four scores count tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, just all the guys, I mean, everybody's playing pretty well. So we just all four need to play well tomorrow if we want a chance to win. Awesome. I'm going to kick it over to Mike. DJ, obviously. Let's take a look at some of DJ's many highlights. Today, a 62, a phenomenal round of golf. That was for Birdie at two. DJ teeing off today at 18. That was for Birdie at eight. This is his second shot at the 10th. Matching Bryson DeChambeau shot for shot today. Both with 67s yesterday, both with 62s today. This is his birdie putt at 11. Eight birdies for DJ. And this is second at 17. To end his day with yet another birdie. Great stuff from these champion golfers and we're pretty much guaranteed well we are guaranteed aren't we have seen Bryson DeChambeau and Dustin Johnson there's a staggered shotgun start tomorrow in the final round so they'll be going off last with either John Rahm or Peter Uline who are both uh, nine under par we're just waiting for confirmation of that either way tomorrow is going to be absolute box office in the race for the title here in Las Vegas yeah there's no question they, these guys are going to be giving each other the old hairy eyeball all day <laughs> they'll be able to smell each other's fear you got a bunch of alpha males out here playing uh, some of the greatest stars in the uh, some of the biggest stars in the game obviously a good collection of the greatest players in the game there's only 13 individual titles a year there's a lot of headlines these guys want to make and they get very few opportunities to do it so it is going to be one for the ages perhaps tomorrow yeah absolutely and and amazing that these guys in the second event of the season are showing the form that they are they've hit the ground yeah. running this season haven't they john rahm as well as 63 for him today he's only two shots back this was for birdie at seven he teed off at six probably took that personally now for birdie at eight the par three the party hole that's going to be loud tomorrow then birdie at 13 and just wait for his third shot at the fourth this really announced john rahm as being in contention delicate skillful just beautiful and, and you know what, Arlo and David, one thing I think that's gonna gonna play out tomorrow or has the potential to play out is the guys who are trailing that final, if that, if that powerhouse three ball is the last group, the guys that are trailing them might not have as good a chance as you would think because I think they're gonna fuel each other on tomorrow, yeah. trying to beat each other's brains in. There's a good chance of that, but I think, you know, maybe down to 10th or 11th, you know, seven under, yeah. um, these guys have still got a chance if they get a little help from above. Yeah. Well, Bryson and Dustin, uh, 62 today, they're too clear. The Johnson, next 16 players are separated by yeah, three shots. Uh, Let's listen into John Rahm uh, and to Bryson DeChambeau off. live. Uh, putted well and drove it pretty well for the most part and just got to tidy up some things for tomorrow. And John, you had a bogey-free 7 under 63 today. Tell us about your round. It was, um, it was, it was a very good day, very good organized day, I would say. I uh, drove it really well. and. When you have a traditional golf course like this one, might not be the longest, but it is pretty narrow. So if, if you can put those drives in the fairway, you're definitely going to give yourself a few, a few birdie chances. That's what I feel like I did today. I uh, gave myself a ton of looks. And uh, even though I, I missed a few, which obviously I'd say you, can, you might miss a few, I, I still ended up shooting a very low score. So very pleased, and, and hopefully I can keep it going tomorrow as well. So you're only two shots off the lead. Um, it seems like the way that this course plays, that that's gettable for you. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, two shots is gettable anywhere. Yeah. It could be one simple hole and, and, and you're back at it. So um, I, I'm going to need a low one tomorrow. Uh, whether it's Bryson, Dustin, or somebody else at eight or nine under is most likely going to come in and shoot somewhat similar to what we shot today. So uh, we're going to need to to post something not extremely low, but a low round as well to end up, to end up with the win, right? It's mm -hmm. just unless it's a windy day, it's just it's a golf course that somebody's going to come out and play good and make birdies. 
And Bryson, you are tied for the lead with Dustin. You're probably going to be in this marquee group tomorrow with Dustin and John. Does that provide a little bit of extra motivation or a little bit more pressure? Well, they're, they're always great guys to play with. It's a lot of fun uh, anytime you get to play with best players in the world and um, go head to head against each other. It's more of a sprint to the finish now. And with the, a lot of birdie holes out there, it's going to be exciting. A lot of fireworks. So what's your strategy going in tomorrow to kind of break away from the pack and try to um, get that win? Well, i got to get my wedging better and drive it a little bit better. And if I can do that, uh, I'll be attacking every hole. Are we going to see you on the range in a little bit? Not at all. You're never going to see me on the range. <laughs> <laughs> Kick it over to Mike. Bryson, you called it a weird day, a yeah. suboptimal day, 62. <laughs> that was uh, the weirdest the 62 I've ever had, yeah. I feel like. Why, why is that? Well, usually when you're playing the Suboptimal well. 62. That just shows you the frame of mind and the form that Bryson DeChambeau is in. Quite incredible. And, yeah, and you look like someone like a, a Cam Smith who birded his opening five holes on Championship Sunday yeah. in Mayakoba. He's seven under, so he's only four back. It could be an absolute cavalry charge uh, towards the uh, end of the day on Championship Saturday tomorrow. But if you are Bryson and you are John Rahm and you are Dustin Johnson, again, we're not entirely sure at the moment whether Rahm will be in that group. We suspect as, as such, uh, which will be fantastic to watch. Um, will that be good for each of them? Just seeing champion golfers all around them, and it's a race to the wire tomorrow. Yeah, these are the days that these guys go to bed dreaming about. You know, you want to be with these guys. You want to be able to stare them down, you know, to you know, impose your will upon them and upon the golf ball, you know, control it. You know, to, to make birdies on a day like tomorrow, you know, there, it's, it, it can be a really special, special day. And then, believe it or not, flying under the radar, it's, it's incredulous to think that you can refer to our, our defending individual live golf champion as flying under the radar after what Taylor Gooch did last year. But he's right there, two shot, or three shots back. It wouldn't surprise anybody for him to go out there tomorrow and hold his own against them. The reason he doesn't get the headlines they do, he doesn't have the major championship record yet that they do. But my pick of those wild cards chasing from behind that don't have the huge major championship resumes, how? Oh, oh, Wolf. oh, yeah. Wolf. oh yeah. 65 yeah. on day one, a 66 today for Matthew Wolf, who plays for the Range Goats, who are going for the team title as well. So Matthew Wolf is nine under par. It's a good shout, Jerry. Let's take a look at some Bryson DeChambeau highlights today. He teed off at four and hit his stride straight away. That was for birdie. And we were, and he's not afraid to say he was on 59 or less watch. During his round, he birdied nine of his first 13. He ended with five pars. This is his uh, second shot at 14. And oh, one bogey was the only blemish on his round of 62. And his third shot at 15. And remember, he went 61-58 at the Greenbrier. So that means, what, 62-57. Yeah. to win tomorrow in Las Vegas. Well, there we go. That is the top of the pylon after round two. DJ, Bryson, 62s today. They are 11 under par. The lead is two over a trio, including John Rahm, Peter Uline, and Matthew Wolf. One shot further back, Taylor Gooch, our reigning individual champion, Jason Kokrak, who ended with an eagle today to get to eight under par. Laurie Cantor, Cam Smith, he can go super low tomorrow. Bubba Watson as well on seven under. A little bit further down. Waco Neiman, who was victorious in Mayakoba uh, last week. He's not a million miles away on six under par. Tyrrell Hatton will have a big role to play for Legion 13 tomorrow as well. A steady week, a great week actually for Henrik Stenson, who's battling illness here in Las Vegas. Brooks Kepka also on five under par. He'll hope that his smash GC can at least get on the podium tomorrow. Not Harold Varner the third's day today, 64 yesterday, but a four over par 74 today. And further down, Patrick Reed, his score counted. It's 66 for the four aces to get them into contention today. So you might be out of it. This is Live Golf individually, but 
every stroke counts for your team. You know, David, when I look at Bryson DeChambeau and being on that sub-60 watch again today, and there, not that long ago, there was a lot of talk of this catchphrase called a comfort zone. Yeah. And sports psychologists would talk about it. And you would oftentimes see even great players get off to good starts and almost get afraid to shoot something really low. Yeah. It doesn't seem like Bryson DeShow has a comfort zone, and if it is, it's a really low comfort zone. No, th th there's such a thing as a fear of success. Yeah. You know, and you see a lot of good players who have it. it cost me my, my career. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> you know, that, that don't quite get, you know, that extra step at the yeah. end. You know, there's that the, you have to want the responsibility that comes with success. You know, not every player wants it. Yeah. Should we get to some team highlights? Because this could go all the way tomorrow as well. The range goes to start. A disappointing 11th place for them in Mayakoba last week. They've given themselves a stern talking to, and they have responded. They are tied for the lead with the four aces. Peter Uline has been playing superbly. He's nine under two back of the individual lead. That was his tee shot at eight. Thomas Peters, a very good week for the Belgian as well, although his score didn't count today. That was his second shot at the seventh. Matthew Wolf has counted both days. That was Birdie at 15, and they will go into the final round, level on 26 under par with the four aces. Talk about team talks. They came 12th, very unfour ace like in Mayakoba. Uh, Patrick Reed, whose score didn't count yesterday, that was for Birdie at 16. He sure did today, four under a 66. And uh, for Birdie at 17. And Pat Perez, who counted yesterday, had a horror start today. Four over after six, but he got it back, and his score counted today as well. That was for birdie at 10. So the team leaderboard, all four scores count on a wild final round. Championship Saturday as it is this week, so the Goats and the four aces are level. The Crushers there once again, 24 and a par. Brooks is smashed 23 under, a little further back, but it's Legion 13 and Todd K on 19 under. The Majestic standing 13th on eight under par. Remember the 13th place team after 13 events, which forms our regular season, do not play in the end of season team championship. So we're going to see a fine, fine team championship tomorrow, aren't we? And, and Jerry has predicted a team playoff. Yeah, there's a guarantee. No, it's scripted. Well, he, yeah, well, he made it scripted. He yeah. made it. He made yeah. a couple of bold predictions. We an, are, an ace tomorrow, at least well, one. Well, the ace is a done deal. It's going to happen at number eight, most likely, although I'm not going to bet on that on the on the roulette wheel. But uh, yeah, no, we, we are so statistically overdue for a team playoff. It's happening tomorrow, yeah. the same weekend as American sports's uh, most important playoff of the entire year, of course, talking about the Super Bowl. So it's only, it's fitting. Yeah, yeah. It's karma. Who's your money on, since we're in 49ers. Vegas? 49ers. For, <laughs> for our. Oh, for our. Team uh, contest in Vegas. Oh, for our team contest. I was going to say, you know, the other uh, team contest, I couldn't give a rat's patoot <laughs> <laughs> about. Um, but, of course, I'm, I'm going with the goats. Yeah. Yeah, they are looking good. Aren't smash, they? smash for life, smash all the way. Yeah. What about Le you? Legion 13. I, I, I maybe they've given themselves a little bit too much work to do on the final day, but it's just you, you know how embarrassed the champion team, the four races were after their performance in Mayakoba, and it has focused them. Yeah. And there they are on 26 under par. And you look at a leader, and a man that you follow into battle and Dustin Johnson with a 62 today. This early in his season to be showing this sort of form, you don't want to let DJ down. So I wouldn't bet against the four races tomorrow no, at all. And, and, and you've got to remember too that these were two disappointing 62s. <laughs> <laughs> Suboptimal. You know, Dustin was a little more you know, happy about his, but you could see that he was frustrated out there. And Rom made a few putts, talking about the individual race here at nine under par. He made a few putts today. He mentioned it in his press conference there, but he, he seemed to leave a lot out there early. And uh, nobody plays perfect golf uh, the entire way, and those guys are all capable of not having their best game and still winning. Tomorrow, I don't think that's going to be the case. Somebody mm. has to play great golf. Well, do join us tomorrow for Championship Saturday. It is going to be a thrill ride in both the individual event and in the team event as well. Two great rounds of golf today by Bryson DeChambeau and Dustin Johnson, a pair of 62s. They lead the way by two on 11 under par, but there's a hungry pack chasing them as well. And the team competition will go all the way. 
For those of you leaving us now, be sure to join us tomorrow for our final round coverage from Live Golf Las Vegas at 12.30 Eastern Time or 9.30 a.m. local. Now it's time to switch over to Club 54, the Live Golf post round show, which can be found globally on Live Golf Plus or the Live Golf YouTube channel. Goodbye for now from Las Vegas. sleeps and what an incredible day two range goats crushers for aces all leading the team standings right here in the city that never sleeps it's super bowl week y'all john Rom, bryson dechambeau dj what an incredible display of golf today and we're here to talk about it welcome to club 54 post round show and i am your host christian crosby couldn't be more excited to talk to you guys today because we are standing here right now with a special guest. But before I intro him, I gotta intro my host. You know him very well, Live Golf Broadcaster, Don Boulay. What up, boy? What's going oh, on? I'm having a good time, <laughs> Cam. As you can tell, it's a little bit more relaxed on this set, isn't very it? It's right chill. down your alley, right from Australia, down on the Gold Coast there. And of course, joining us, Cam Smith. Thank you so much for joining Ooh. the show. We're so excited to talk to you. No man. worries, mate. Two days in Vegas. How are you feeling? Um, yeah, cold. Uh. <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> you see what I got on, Cam? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been good. The, the golf course, I think, has held up a little bit more than we all thought it was going to. It's very tricky out there, and uh, one more round to go, and um, a few back. Uh, the Rippers, uh, probably a little bit too far back, but you never know all four scores count tomorrow. Can't agree more. Yeah, you told me at the start of the week, we had a little chat, that you thought 20 under par, 25 under par might win, and like you just said, it's not been that way. Can you tell us why? I think it's tricky in between all these uh, houses and buildings to gauge the wind. Um, it's It swirls around a, a lot, um, although there's not a, a lot around. Um, and then there's plenty of, you know, 20, 25 footers out there. Um, and I think the gradient of the kind of earth here is, is uh, dictating what the putt's doing, not necessarily the slope. So what, what you see and what the putt's actually doing, there's a lot of people scratching their heads out there. So uh, <laughs> they're, they're tricky to read and... Um, yeah, I think that's it. Well, Cam, we actually have some of your highlights. We're going to take a look at them here, and I would love for you to take us through them. Check it out. Yeah, this is uh, this is when I started hitting it actually quite nice, and it was nice to roll in a good one here. It kind of got the putter hot. Uh, you always roll it well. You always <laughs> roll it well. This is actually a really good second shot. I hit it in the trap here, and that one just squeezed in the edge. Yeah, this this is where the uh, you know the, the shorter irons really started to feel good and um, making those parts just keeping the round going was nice. Did you have any mud balls out there? Because I know talking to a couple of other players, even when they're on the fairway now, there was no lift clean in place today. They had trouble with some mud balls. Yeah, we had a we probably had one or two. There was uh, one uh, one on six today that did something really funky, but and and then the next one kind of didn't do anything funky. So another tough thing to kind of read. But um, you know, towards the end of the round, the fairways were actually kind of, kind of running out a bit, and those greens were firming up just a little bit. So um, tomorrow with the forecast, I think it's going to be a little bit windier. So. Um, I think it's going to be real tricky out there yeah, tomorrow. It's be fun tomorrow. With the loud noise that these guys gave us in the intro, I'm assuming they're all Ripper Woo, fans let's here. Go, let's take a look at some let's Team Ripper highlights and talk us through them, Cam. Check it out. I mean, I wish I could see him live. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is Herbie making a putt here. He uh, he makes plenty of putts. This guy, <laughs> he makes plenty. Wow, that was a what a highlight there. <laughs> <laughs> talk your talk, Cam. <laughs> uh, yeah, another Herbie putt going in here. I mean, yeah, this guy rolls it as good as anyone, and uh, once he gets those irons going, it's it's pretty special to watch. Nice eagle there, Leash. Wow, that's a hard hole, that one. 
Yeah, if Herbie can control those wedges into these greens, he's he's gonna ha he's gonna shoot a real low one. We saw this one about three minutes ago, but we're gonna watch it here again. <laughs> right in the middle. Get the round going that one. Another one there. This that was actually one of those putts that did something a little bit different to what I was thinking it was gonna do. Jonesy. Jonesy's uh He's worked a lot. He's been telling me he's worked a lot and he's putting in the off season and um, he just needs to hit it a little bit better. He's, he says that he's scrapping it around a little bit, so I'm looking forward to some Jonesy action towards the end of the season. And here are some of your fans on social media, Cam. Go Ripper GC, loving the action. Gotta love that from Briz Vegas there. Mm. Talk about the fans, Cam. How, how have you been receiving the uh, fans? Um, yeah, I love it. Um, I don't know. I, I like to embrace the fans a little bit. Um, I think it's a really good atmosphere out here to, to kind of do that. Um, yeah, the, the kind of the more love you give them, the more love they give you. So there's no point in putting your head down. Love a tweet we just saw. Is that Houdini with the putter? No, that's Cam Smith. <laughs> The tweets just get better and better, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we do this thing on the show called Form Check. We ask fans to submit their swings, and then we show them to you, and you check them. Okay. You ready for it, This will be interesting. <laughs> All yep. right, let's get into some Form Check action. Cam, be honest, it makes for good TV. Um, uh, let's have a look here. Actually, not too bad. Could do with probably a little bit more rotation in the backswing, but... And maybe probably not so much rotation with the club head. So. Okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty good actually. I'll take that one. This dude like Here's looks another. like two young boys here, ripping it. I remember those days. Just keep trying to hit it hard, lads. <laughs> yeah, stay in balance. Is that cam approved? Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll take it. Here's another. Let's check this out. Ooh, yeah, that one's not that pretty, but uh, <laughs> we still love you. See, Bruce 23, we it. still love you. Don't be he mad at us. Um, yeah, probably a little bit more uh, connection in the backswing, and then then just kind of get your arms down in front of yourself. I feel like you're kind of throwing it out there a bit too much on the downswing. So, all right, one more, Cam. There we go. Oh, that one looks nice. This guy's a flusher. I can already tell. <laughs> That was pure. Gotta love that. That was nice. Cam, you yeah. did great. Thank you Thanks. so much for your time. You're an absolute stud. We hope to have you back soon. And good luck tomorrow. Thanks, mate. I'm full, going to find my jumper. Yeah, full back. You, you're in with a chance tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think uh, given how tricky it is out here and, and the forecast, like I mentioned before, I think, um, you know, Aussies love the wind. So. Um, hopefully it can be a good day for myself and a good day for Team Ripper. So we'll see how we go out there tomorrow. All, right, all the best. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you Cheers, As guys. he gets out of here, guys, come on, bring the energy. We're in Las Vegas. <laughs> what is going on behind us? They promised us they would bring the energy <laughs> on the show. The there we go. Baby. Thank you, Cam. Guys, stick Let's around here at Club 54. Post-round show. And as you know, we can't have a post-round show without Rachel okay. Drummond. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, <laughs> what's going on? Play water more. We haven't got an audience over here, Richard. Well, yeah, you wouldn't expect what would be. <laughs> Stop that. Right, we're going to have a chipping masterclass by Richard Bland from the Cliques. Thank you. I've given you a tight line to start with. You're welcome. Shall we begin? <laughs> yeah, first chip for pretty much the first chip of the day because I didn't miss any greens today. So, uh, yeah, you're not making it very easy. Ball above my feet as well. So, so, Blandy shot five under today. He missed two greens and he made no bogeys, which means he got up and down. So, we thought you'd be the man. So we're going to talk first of all about this lie, Blandy. Very tight lie. Yeah. I mean, it gives me anxiety. I don't know about the people at home. How do you play this technically? So for this, um, you know, with, with the tight lie, it, it, for me, it's very much about the, the strike and the angle of attack. So uh, what you don't want to be doing is kind of grounding the club too far back, because then you'll get like that sort of bounce of feet. You'll get too much of the bounce playing. So for me, it's kind of like letting the club kind of set a little earlier. So the, the angle of a tackle is a little bit steeper. And then it's just, for me, it's just kind of keeping the speed on the, on the club and rotating through it. Just making sure you don't stop. So let's just try one. And by setting that club early, you're talking about wrist hinge. Does that keep yeah. a bit more loft on the club head? Uh, 
I don't think, well, Say yes, I <laughs> don't really know. I don't really sort of think of that too much. Um, it does for those at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you know, for me, um, you know, I always kind of think sort of golfers are probably not the brightest people. So the less we can think about stuff, the better. So, yeah, um, yeah I've hit a million of these in my career. So it's, I just trust my technique and, yeah, I've played it so many times to so just, just get up and play the shot really as long as I commit to it. And let's talk about setup. You know, what are you thinking about ball position? Uh, again, I, I don't <laughs> really want to sound too, to the viewers. I, I, again, you can move the ball a little bit if you want. You can move it up a little bit further and maybe play the club a bit weaker. Yep. Or if you want, you know, you can move it a little bit further back so the hands are set forward and play a little square sort of this way. But, and so that would be hitting a slightly lower trajectory? Yeah, I think a lot depends that on what um, on what shot you have to play, what's in front of you. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's that old adage of get the ball on the ground as quickly as you can, and, and that's what we do a lot of the time. Play this, don't complicate it if you don't have to, just play the shot as simply as you can. So this kind of shot here, really what we're trying to play, is you're probably trying to land it maybe two, three yards on the green and just let it kind of release out to the flag. So there's no need to lob it up in the air and make it any more, com uh, any more complicated. So it's just, so for this shot, I wouldn't really be doing anything with my ball position pretty central. Yeah. The hands slightly forward. And, and as I just said, just, just kind of set the club a little bit and rotate through it. And in terms of routine, you obviously club selection, you'll think about where you want to land it. Do you visualise the shot you want to play? Do you see it or do you just hit it? Uh, again, you know, you, you, once you kind of get up to the ball, you've got a rough idea of what you're going to do. Obviously, a lot is lie dependent. You know, if, if, if the lie is bad, then yes, you know, you might move the ball position a like little bit this, to help. Andy? Oh, thank you very much. What would you That's do out of there? We've got a seeded divot. Yeah, so a seeded divot, I would tend to go then. I would get the ball way back in my stance. See here, I've still got some room to work with. Get the hands forward to make sure then that you know you kind of get down and into the back of the ball because anything anything behind it is just the ball's just going to go here. So Can we see one? I'm putting you under pressure so here. So yeah, hopefully we don't do that. So let's try and get ball first. Ah, oh, we did. <laughs> so there you go. Blendy, come on. <laughs> I have to give you a bit. It is a nasty lie. Yeah, let's try that one again. So ball back to help ball the strike. Back, yeah. Weight in your feet? Uh, nothing really. I'm more trying to set the club really. Uh, yeah. The hands forward. There we go. Can Not I much can better. I just say that Blandy has never had a short game lesson, which no, is never. just unbelievable. Probably after those last two, maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go to different <laughs> lies. Can we come to the thicker yep. rough? I'm not doing a good caddying job. <laughs> okay, so it's quite thick around the greens here. Talk us through how you'd play this slightly yeah, different again, to the tight line. Yeah, you know, again, you, depending on, let's say, if we're going to go to this, you know, you've kind of short-sided yourself a little bit. Uh, the lie's not too bad. So again, you'd play it with, I'd play it with my 58 degree, most lofted club. Again, and obviously you'd set the club behind the ball to see how open you can get it, um, to get under the ball. And then again, nothing really changes it's a bit like a bunker shot it's kind of just keep especially through this longer grass is is keep the speed up okay you, what you don't want to be doing is deaccelerating because as soon as the club comes into the into the grass it's gonna it's kind of gonna flip over i think that is such a good tip for everyone at home yeah. playing it like a bunker you yeah get and then I, and actually speed. like with the you know a, a good tip that i would maybe give to the to the people at home is is maybe actually just grip it a little firmer in the left hand so you actually then keep the loft on the club as it goes through impact goes through impact so, so slightly stronger with the lead yeah, hand yeah just to, to feel that, that then it's the club's moving this way what you don't want is the club moving this way got you there's a very good coach out here called pete cowan and he's what we call a short game expert and he'd call that the butterfly grip so strong in both lead you're looking at me yeah. like what are you want about Rachel yeah, exactly. strong in the left Never and the heard right of that, but <laughs> yeah it's, it's the same thing it, it, it's it, it's basically you know sometimes you, I, I would actually probably do that on the course if I'm trying to hit a fade is actually is maybe just grip it a little tighter in my left hand so then I feel that this stays really strong so then the club is not going to do this that's the one thing I don't want 
So if I'm actually trying to hit like a, a cut into a flag or something like that, I might just try and feel that my left left hand grip is that little bit tighter, not stronger, just tighter. So just giving the gold here, Blandy. And I think that is so important. Your setup before you even take the club will dictate the shot you want to yeah, play. Yeah, exactly. It? Just so then there's no manipulation. Yeah. So there's no manipulation. Set set the the club how you want it addressed, squarer, more further back, and then just play the shot. Then there's no manipulation whatsoever. Beautiful, Blandy. And how long do you spend on these sorts of shots when you get to a tournament to uh, test the grass? Do you I think play? If, it, if it's like this kind of grass, we play on quite a lot. So I don't really feel like you have to do. I have to do too much. Like last week in Mexico, where we had the Bermuda grass. Of course, we haven't played for three months, so um, I hadn't done any chipping out of Bermuda for since we we're in Miami. So it just takes you, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes just to get the feel of how the cl uh, the club goes through the grass, how it comes out, what kind of trajectory it's going to come out on, and and then once you're, you know, once you're sort of got that feel, you're off. not not too much really. Right. I'm going to finish up with one tip for the viewer at home. One Coming tip from with short Blandy game. that's never had a golf lesson before. <laughs> for me, short like with, with, with short game, for me, it's all about club head speed. That's what I kind of feel. There's, there's two things, club head speed and strike. If you haven't got those, if you certainly if you haven't got strike, you've got nothing in short game, especially off, off this kind of grass. Um, so I would certainly work on your strike on the tighter lies. When you get into the longer grass, it's more club head speed for me. Have you got any good drills for working on, you know, your strike drill? I think strike, it, it, it's it's ball position. Yeah. So work on your ball position. You might, you know, just figure it out. Move it forward, move it back. Play it in the centre. See which shot you prefer to play, what you strike the best. And then and then just play with that. But it, it, there's all this, the same kind of thing. If you're maybe two or three yards off the green and it's puttable, Put it. You know, it, it's even, out, even for a lot of the pros. Sometimes it's not about chipping the ball in. Of course, that's what you're trying to do. It's actually right. It's making par. If you miss a green, it's first and foremost is make par. Obviously, there's certain shots. Yes, if you're just off the edge, you really are trying to hold. But and that's exactly what you did today, Blander. You said you had a shot just off the green, but you putted it because it was the best yeah, shot. Yeah, I was. It, to be fair, I was only six inches off the green, so yeah. of course that's what I would do. But um, it, yeah, it, it's just don't 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 make it complicated. Just just play the sensible shot all the time. That's the hardest thing in golf, Andy. Not making yeah, it, it complicated. It is because you know we all kind of want to play the the shot that looks good, but probably I would say eight times out of ten, that's the wrong shot. It's the smart shot. It's the wrong shot. You you look at all the top players. Tiger was great at it. He played the right shot all the time, and there's a lot to be said about that. Blandy, you're a legend. Well Thank played you. today. Five under for the cliques. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Rachel. Thank Thanks, you. Blandy. Amazing job, Rachel. Thank you, Richard. That was exceptional. Uh, learned a lot from watching that. Hope you guys did at home. And here's a tweet from Cliques GC. All eyes on the band on the Bland wagon. <laughs> and what an awesome photo there of our guy Bland. Great job there. Live Golf continues to bring golf, but louder to exciting venues and cities. Needless to say, the players had this event circled on their calendars. Check it out, y'all. Vegas, baby. Come on. Man, I'm pumped. It's party city, you know? I think it's gonna be really cool to, to showcase the talent in a place like that. Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas could be unbelievable. Being so close to the Strip, so many people are in town. I'm definitely very excited about that. Live Golf to Las Vegas week of the Super Bowl is one of the best things that we could have done. Those fans are the same fans that would really enjoy and appreciate what Live Golf has to offer. We're going to Las Vegas Country Club. It's a golf course that I really like. You know, it's in my hometown, right on the Strip. It'll be popping. Very excited about playing out of home because my record at home is pretty good. Yeah, I think it could be a lot of people, it could get noisy. Vegas, Super Bowl weekend.
really won't get any better than that. We're live from Las Vegas. Thanks so much for watching Club 54 Post Round Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and joining us, joining me and Dom, uh, we have to talk to Jerry Foltz in just a few, but let's take a look. <laughs> look at this, look at this, Jerry, you can feel free to chime in here, but this reminds me of a, a, a movie I've seen before, right? <laughs> oh, the Hangover. That's brilliant. Well, we're in Vegas, so uh, it, it, it doesn't get much better than this, guys. Gotta the, love that. The baby you, Bjorn with Sam Horsfield in it is classic. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the Photoshop job is the question. I, I gotta, <laughs> we gotta talk to him offline. <laughs> All right, we're keeping the show going here live from Las Vegas, joined by Don Boulay and of course, Jerry Fultz. Thank you guys for joining us for the show. Let's get into individual leaders yes. of today. Yes. I mean, you had a you had a great time watching all day. What, what's your take on Bryson? Well, we got a star-studded leaderboard. <laughs> a, heavy, a heavyweight title fight, as Vegas used to be famous for, that we were billing it as already for tomorrow. Uh, but Bryson DeChambeau, he looked like he was gonna break 70 once again as Henrik Stenson walks by and gives me the yep, yep, yep. I want to get him over here and see this baby Bjorn idea that was no. But uh, he looked like he was going sub 60 again and then kind of stalled out after his last par five on 15. Let's um, check out the highlights yeah, real quick, was, Jerry, and, and let's hear from golf. you as we watch him. Here we go, Bryson DeChambeau. Good day for him. And Dom gets to see these for the first time. See, the yeah. bad part about being on course commentary is you only get yeah. to see three players. I know, so and so at all, though. Uh huh. This is at six for birdie, filling it up as we have seen him do before. He said the putter felt good and then just for some reason got a little uncomfortable after 15. But this is another 15 footer at seven. There's the second shot of the ninth hardest hole on the golf course. But uh, if he drives it in the middle of the fairway, it's just a little wet shot for him. Great distance control. Moves on to the 11th and another one of those mid-length putts that really are the difference maker to round, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. You got to keep this length of putts like the one just on the previous highlight reel and look like he's rolling it beautifully. Then he... He's out ready to play early this year, isn't he? Yeah. Struggled last year at the start of the year, but uh, it's not the case right now. Oh. Oh, look at that. It's a tap in range. Cam Smith now making his way over here looking for some hand warmers. His hands are ice cold when I shook it. <laughs> not with the putter it wasn't. Oh, never. No. They'd have to freeze some solid blocks for him <laughs> not to make everything. And Bryson to touch it off here at 16. So 62. Another brilliant round. Yeah. That's incredible. Now, Bryson DeChambeau actually degree, agreed to get mic'd up on his day one, which is incredible. Big shout out to Live Golf Productions for that. Take a look at his day one. Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, and John Rahm will tee off together today off the second hole. How are we going, bro? How are we too. How are we going? going? That is going to be a fascinating route to follow. <laughs> It is so hard to swing in the cold, bro. 54, downwind, six, seven. I got uh, 12 feet, pull this thing 10 feet. Kind of flattens out and goes this way. First half, right to left, flat. The straight out. putts, the straight putts right here. Yeah. So it's like it goes. Yes. Dials in the distance nicely. Crush that, bro. Pretty well done there from Bryson. Just a little speedy. And break, dude. Like a chance to sit. Golly. Pink on fire one. You shoot five, six under the first round, bro. You know, like this is a golf course that is tailor made for me. Bryson's such a great character. And, uh... Come on, let's make some birdies, dude. Get in the fight. Get in the fight. So much going through his mind. Bryson kick starts. His opening round in Las Vegas, birdie at 17, he is two under par. It's gonna be the fun part. Yes. He's been grinding all day. Rise into Shambo. John, thanks, brother. That was fun. As always, appreciate it, brother. Good stuff, dude. Thanks, good play. Nice good job, guys. Good play, man. Ah, uh, you gotta love it. What amazing content that is. And here's some tweets 
Bryson, Rom, and DJ all at the top? Seems like a good watch for me tomorrow. Can't it wait. Is, it is official. Rom <laughs> is in that final grouping in our stagger wow. shotgun starts tomorrow. That's going to be cool. I mean, that, it's so cool to see Bryson get mic'd up like that, yeah. by the way. Yeah. That content is just so cool to watch for me. He agreed today and tomorrow as well. How? How special is it for a guy like Bryson these to agree kids, to do stuff like these that? These kids nowadays call it content. content. Oh, yeah, <laughs> content. baby. Content yeah. is king, yeah. Jerry. Content, content is creation. King. Come yeah. on, get with it. <laughs> no, he's all about the content. He's all about his YouTube channel. He's all about growing his brand, but the yeah. Crusher's brand and Live Golf as well, and introducing the game to an audience that wouldn't otherwise right. have any interest in watching golf. He's bringing those to him, and in thus doing so, Dom, truly, it's an old catchphrase, cliche yeah. saying, but he's growing the game. He is, certainly, and uh, like you said, he's growing his brand, and he's got so many followers, and they'll, they tune in to watch what he's got, and his yeah. team will put together a great show, and... I think millions of people will see it. Yeah. We've seen it before. Followers and content. Yeah. You ever Absolutely. think we'd be talking no. about that no. on TV? I have no followers. <laughs> All right, and I have no it. content. <laughs> You're good on social. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Have you seen any of my stuff on social? I actually <laughs> haven't. Because I if haven't you found it, it nobody you're has. the only one. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk about Dustin Johnson a little bit before we get out of here. Yeah. We couldn't do a post-round show without bringing up his game today. Uh, Jerry, what do you think? You know, he uh, claims to have not practiced a whole lot yeah. in the offseason. He came in he ex expecting a little more rust, and he was a little surprised yesterday. Dustin Johnson, when he knows where the golf ball is going coming off that club, and assuming the putter is just lukewarm, he's yeah. a threat to be reckoned with. I think the thing we have in store for us tomorrow, those, those three heavyweights as well as the pursuers are going to all push each other, and it's just going to be a dogfight to the end. Yeah. All right, let's check out some highlights here, of DJ. He actually didn't putt very well yesterday. I followed him for about 15 holes and he hardly yeah. made anyway but uh, look at this one a little left to right perfect pace right in the middle of the hole and when he gets this hot as Jerry says I mean he hits the ball from tee to green so well uh, he's going to give himself so many chances many chances from that sort of distance I mean tomorrow it's Ali Fraser Foreman yeah, it, it really is. is it is yeah The second and ten. Obviously, that was a birdie. Uh -huh. Then on to eleven. A little left to right, or catches the corner of the hole. Not a problem for DJ. And seventeen here. That this is not an easy hole to get to. Not a lot of room over that bunker. There's a bunker behind. And look at that foot distance control. Yeah, he didn't seem to like the shot when he hit in his reaction. No. But three feet behind the hole, what's not to love? All right, let's talk about this team competition. Uh, top of my mind, I'm thinking about the range goats. Uh, Jerry, oh, these guys are, are are looking good out there. Yeah. What well, did we, you say? You know, we with four scores counting tomorrow, Dom, anything could happen. You could be 10 shots back yeah. and make a run at it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 10 shots can change in two holes yeah. when, we, when you got four scores counting. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's anybody's game, really, but they are playing well, all four of them. Well, here's some range goats highlights here. Peter Uline for birdie at seven. He had it going pretty well today until the end when he got a little loose on number two with his tee shot. That's on the tee at eight. Now the little party hole. Look at that, the way he spun it in there, turned the club head over. Beautiful shot. Thomas Peters, he's got his coach here, and his swing is looking a lot better than it did last year. Boy, he's a quick player. He is. He's, he's as quick as Matt Jones. Yeah. And here is my guy. If there is somebody not out of, in that final grouping that's going to win tomorrow, it's this man, Wolfie. He just he just seems to be in just the right place yeah. to be able to do it. Now, I think at 24 years old, he's not afraid, Dom. No, he's not afraid at all. He's as talented as anybody out here. And he's found a team that fits him. He's oh. <laughs> it's cold out here. <laughs> it, is, it should be fun tomorrow, to say the least. Let's check out the uh, leaderboards, yeah. shall we, boys? All right, here we go. And these lovely graphics, bow, there they are. <laughs> you know, I made, the point, that? I made the point on the air, Dom, I, mean, I know you were listening. Um, there's only 13 individual titles. There's 30, yeah. wait, 41 players minimum who aren't going to win an individual title this yeah. year. We have a lot of alpha dogs on alpha males on this I on this tour who want headlines, and they're contending for 13 <laughs> headlines. That's it. They're going to push each other. They are. They really are going to do it. The John Rahm signing has been a, a revelation here, and they're going to push each other hard. And you know, usually I think five back has uh, got a chance, but with that leaderboard right. at the top, I don't think no. anyone five backs really got a chance at all. Here's the team leaderboard here. Four aces at the top. Who's your pick, Dom? 
let me see. I'm got to go with the range goats because all four of them seem to be pretty much on form. Well, I'm smashed for life, so I'm yeah, sticking with them. You're sticking with it, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm Ironheads. Where are they? Oh, no, no <laughs> chance. <laughs> Well, as you can see, we're live here from Las Vegas. Thank you guys for joining us in Club 54 Post Round Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby. Don Boulay, thank you so much. Jerry Fultz, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow for day three. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.